I'll talk to you after. Thank you. Oh, hello. Thank you. We put some packets. Oh, wow. Just a minute. Sorry. That's what we thought. Wait a minute. All right, let's go ahead and call this meeting to order. <coughs> Rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 All right, thanks everybody for being here. Um, I know we got a lot to cover. We have, so on our agenda, we have uh, guests and audience comments uh, starting out. Let's maybe do this. Can, Valerie, can I have you check our email first? And then I just want to do a quick recap and then we'll get, we'll, we'll get back to it, interject as the. No emails since the tribe board meeting. Okay. Very good. Um, so a recap of where we are after Saturday. Uh, we left Saturday afternoon um, with the, the bones of a budget in place for the year. Um, working through the craziness of, of this year here, where we left off um, our, our significant changes was in a nutshell, we were looking to advance a budget that is short of what was submitted, short of the $40 million mark. Um, we're deciding to rely on fund balance for a half a million dollars, and then we're looking to um, reduce the amount that the Board of Education asked by 1%, which worked out to roughly be $240,000. Um, on top of that, our capital projects are looking to be extremely limited uh, this year due to where we are and just in the, the general order of things. Um, spending the majority of the, the, fun, the capital funds that are available on, on road reclamation. Um, the position of the board on Saturday was that we were looking to get uh, an idea of what it would look like if we took the capital, the projects that are listed for capital for the Board of Ed and requested that the Board of Ed use their savings to accomplish uh, the majority of what they were looking to do with those, with their capital reserves. Um, so that's where we are coming into, to, into today. So I wanted to um, review, <coughs> Cindy, I appreciate you putting this together and uh, getting an idea of what that would look like. So um, we can kind of flesh through things and uh, see where we are. Um, so with that said, I'm wondering where, uh, where you guys uh, came back, if there's been any movement on, um, on your projects, if there's anything that you'd like to take the time now to highlight, um, and we can take it from there and uh, then move on to what the town's looking at for capital and see if we can move the ball a little, little further up the field today. So. So would love at that opportunity to revisit some of these items that okay. we have reprioritized. We're not at the amount that you refer to in savings, which we really use for emergencies. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. But wanted to highlight some of these top priorities and answer questions, give everybody an opportunity to really process why they're being asked why they're on the capital budget so that we're all on the same page and that you can make an informed decision because we're all here to serve the community, children and families included. So first, some of the highlighted priorities you see right here, the stage lighting. We still do not have confirmation yet. We are hopeful that Eversource can do this. Um, that dollar amount is still showing up because we do have a need to update the stage lighting. Um, the hot water 
holding tank. This, this would be very problematic. Should there be a problem at the time of emergency would be too late. This is 500 gallons. This would travel down the hall into the auditorium. We would have to close the school. So just wanted to reiterate why that's here. Um, next item, the stage curtain, as you know, um, is not only falling apart structurally, um, but it certainly is not fire um, rated any longer. And the track for them is not up to code, so we'd have to replace the track and the curtain. Um, next in line, the sidewalk project for the pre-K area. Mm -hmm. With the trees that at the rooting destroy the walks that are there, that unevenness is a safety concern for the students and for adults. So right now, it's not ADA compliant at all. So we are looking to be responsible and not have a situation where somebody does have an injury. That's why that amount is there. The system-wide duct cleaning, um, middle school and high school, that is state mandated. The hot water, the two hot water heaters for the middle school, they keep getting repaired. We have patches on them. Um, we're finding that parts are not available, so we're having to find some other part that maybe can still work. So we're very concerned that this would be problematic and we would have to close a school should we have a problem with the water heaters at the middle school. Next, indoor air quality, the five-year inspections, as you know, it's mandated. After that, we have the air conditioners for middle school and high school. It's oppressive heat, so if it gets to certain temperatures, it's really not healthy in the spring and in the fall. We wanted to bring in better um, temperatures for students and the adults um, at the middle school and high school. <coughs> the new kitchen serving line, it's not functioning. So the staff has to go back and forth from the ovens to the line because they can't keep the food warm. And <coughs> that causes a potential issue. We're really looking to update it. It's been since 1962. That's how old that serving line is. So we've been, we've been holding on as much as we can. The high school field house roof, um, looking to obviously repair there. It was not replaced on the roof. If it leaks onto new equipment and gets damaged after you just paid for new equipment, like that doesn't make sense. So that's why we have it as a priority. Next in line, um, the middle school exterior, washing and sealing. This is maintenance. It's turning black. If we don't upkeep the exterior, the brick starts to crumble, and then the building ages itself out sooner than it really needs to. Next, we have the system-wide cafeteria equipment. This is what you, con you give every year and it is used every year. There's always equipment that fails that we need to, on a moment's notice, be able to replace so that we can serve um, lunch to the students. Next, we have the gymnasium floors. This is continuation of funding. Um, it's just part of having gym floors in schools, and so we would certainly want to continue um, that annual because we do need to sand them and seal them they start to buck we can already see a section so we want to be thoughtful and maintain the floors rather than have to replace completely in the future next the system-wide carpet and flooring replacement this is annual maintenance it's constant repair um, and 
it's something that we've always used the funding because of the needs at the school um, and we want to make sure that you're continuing to support that upkeep. Field improvements. I don't know if you've been out to the fields. They are much better, I am told, than what they were. And we want to maintain the fields and provide proper care for our student athletes and for the guests who come and play for the competitions. Next, the zero turn mower. We only have one. We need another one. We're not going to be able to keep up with the needs with what we currently have. Nathan Hale Ray High School track, the fiber for internet. Priority is we want to have cameras down there. We definitely want to be able to see what happens out there with the masses of folks coming, visitors coming, others coming from other places. And if anything should happen, we want to be able to access real imaging. Next, we have interior paint. Again, that's normal wear and tear that is used each year. And if there are nicks and holes, we want to make sure that our buildings are presentable and seeking to maintain that quality. The system-wide radon testing is mandated. The middle school exterior horn strobes alarm system, that is a safety issue and ADA requirement. So we want to make sure that we comply in that realm as well. The padding on the basketball poles, that's a safety issue. Kids, they're not always looking where they run. And the injuries of hitting one of those poles, we've had that situation. And then we also have found that kids start climbing them. We want to prevent that. And so now that we have this knowledge and we don't follow through, I do feel like we're being negligent. System-wide radios, we have radios as old as 10 years. And it's important for people to be able to communicate from across campuses. So we would like to um, purchase those. Continuing, um, those are additional that are there. I wanted to highlight the ones I just spoke of and answer questions because we don't understand removing all that we just listed. We're willing to answer questions to understand perspectives. So I would like just to kind of elaborate on some of the ones that uh, Dr. Tabrito just went over. The high school Sage Lining, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there was a fire um, that obviously didn't get anywhere and it was caused by this Sage Lining. Um, the, if, when you look up, you'll see where the outlet, um, and luckily somebody was there. And because those stage lightings, because we don't have enough room for our music students, they have to have class on that stage. Um, there's no other lighting there. And so that becomes kind of a big issue. When we're talking about the maintenance <clears throat> for the holding tanks, and we're talking about the, um, the issues with the exterior, you know, spraying of it and maintaining it. I just want to remind everybody what John Winthrop is going through right now. They kept putting off all of their maintenance and they kept putting off working on air conditioning quality. They put off doing um, a lot of their stuff. They wound up with black mold. Do you know what their cost is right now? They're going to a referendum for $500 million dollars to have to redo that school. They've been closed down since September. <clears throat> they took all of their elementary kids and they put them into their high school. So when you look at some of these issues, maintaining your buildings and not running to failure is very, very critical. 
especially when you're talking about hot water heaters, especially when you're talking about air conditioners. Air conditioners are not just about cooling. They condition the air. They take out a lot of that humidity. And in, as we all know, when you start school in August and September, our humidity levels are still very high. <clears throat> and that's a problem when you have all of that moisture and everything sitting into those rooms. So I just wanted to bring that one up. Um, my father was on the building committee probably and was probably one of the people that picked out that serving line and in 1962. Like, uh, how can we justify not updating something from 1962? You know, it's probably the same serving line that I ate off as a kid there. And I'm going to turn over 50. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it that. <laughs> the, um, I'm in my 30s. When we're talking about some of the cafeteria equipment, and I know that, you know, it's like that $25,000, and like, what are we doing with some of it? Some of those things, are like, we needed desperately the ice machine. And the ice machine that we wound up um, buying a couple of years ago, it was for the sports and for um, just general use. Um, those are some of the things that we, we have to have because if you don't have, you have to have ice at all your games because of injuries. You need to have ice, you know, for any of the, um, the classes that are, are keeping things cold or for serving the different, different needs and stuff. Um, and I just want to remind everybody in regard to the track and putting the internet down there. We have already had one incident before the track was even open where there were dirt bikes, I believe they were dirt bikes, that right. came yep. in off of the roads and got onto the track. We don't have cameras down there. You can't see what's going on. The police can go to those houses that are behind there and go ask them if their rings, but their rings aren't going to list all the way to there. And the same thing happens up on the top now, now that we have equipment up there, and then some of the equipment doesn't even fit into the shed. So if someone goes down there, they break hurdles, or if something happens, we have no way of saying to our police force, here's the tape, go get them. We can use speculation of, well, this car drove by the parking lot, but it's, it's, to me, that's a serious issue. Um, and in regard to the um, radios, <clears throat> I sat in on the safety meeting. I heard about the radios, whether they're working, whether or not they're not working, how much they're used. Um, to me, that's critical. If we have a lockdown, you can't use your phones. If you have a group that's outside and they're, you know, far away from the school and stuff, the teacher needs to have a, a radio to be able to say, hey, Johnny Fell, look at the situation with what happened with those bees last year. And that teacher had to, are you guys aware of that? There was kids walking on the trail, part of a class, everything's going well, and it was part of an assignment, and they tripped over a hornet's nest, and several kids got stung. We need that communication. And we can't have teachers, because of FOI as well, using their phones to communicate back to the school and saying, hey, call 911, please, you know, this and that. Because once those radios go off, then the whole system is aware of what's going on, and they can communicate. So that's one of the reasons why we're really firm on, on the radios. Um, in regard to the system-wide um, improvements of the field, there's many times when our softball players twist their ankles out in that backfield because it's not level. There's only so much that we can do. We try to do one field at a time, then work on another one. Our kids go off to the other fields and the other schools, and they're pristine. I get it. We don't have that much money, and I, I think that we work 
really well with what we have. But if you let that field go and we don't keep up with it, it's going to take about three to five years to bring that back to the standards that are, they are now. So that, those are the kind of things that I kind of wanted to bring up um, to piggyback Dr. Tabrita. I just wanted to add, we came to you recently because um, the septic tap failed when the power went out and there was no generator. And you asked us to use reserves. We also came to you because of the ADA softball seating requirement. The state says it has to be done by this summer, $156,000. You asked us to use reserves. Just today, third grade bathroom wing at the elementary school. Children are not able to use the bathroom because two sewer ejector pumps failed. So we have that dirty water backing up into the building, floor drains and showers today. So what I'm asking for is consideration of the reality of upkeep of your buildings and fields and to make sure that we have funding to do <coughs> what we know we need to do and not create an emergency situation where you can't respond in time for us to continue to educate kids. Okay. Thank you both very much for uh, walking us through that here. Um, so what do we have in our reserves? $422,589.28. I'm sorry, Cindy, could you? <laughs> $422,589.28. Like you were ready for that question. I was ready for that question. Is any of that encumbered? Uh, no, no. That is taking out the two projects that we took out already. But not the bathroom situation. Not right. the bathroom. That's new. That just happened 30 seconds ago. I don't know how much that would be. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions, but I'm going to turn it over first. Um, who'd like to start? Anyone have questions for our superintendent or for Ms. Trigger? Maureen? We start over on that side. We can do that, too. <laughs> Harvey, you want to start us out? Okay. I'm um, first, I'm going to have some opening remarks, as our esteemed House of Representatives and Senate do. Um, as some of you may know, and many of you may not, my wife taught, this is all to emphasize that I'm not against education. In fact, I think it's very important. My wife taught in this school system for a career, as can be attested to by at least one member. Um, my sister spent a career in elementary education. I have two br brothers-in-law and a sister-in-law who spent their whole lives beating knowledge into little kids' heads. I got no problem with education. I think it's a wonderful thing. However, um, the $880,000 that you have here represents three quarters of the mill on the tax base, right? Uh, so that's a, we got to think how we're going to do that. So. How much are you willing to draw down your reserves? I would say that that would be a question for the Board of Finance because... Well, then 100%. Okay, so then and that... And you get 50 new dollars July 1. That's... Now, t now tell me why I'm wrong. You're wrong because if that's like wiping out your entire savings account. So if we have one special needs student, and we've been very fortunate that we haven't had to come to this, but the way things are going, don't be surprised. If we have one special needs student that we need to outplace that's not in our budget, and that's going to cost you $200,000, then it's going to be up to the Board of Finance to figure out where are you going to find that money, because we're going to be mandated for it. Okay. If 
the, something happens at the track and a dirt bike is driven all over it and we are faced with $100,000 worth of repairs, we're going to come to the Board of Finance and say, where do you want us to come to this or do you want to leave it ripped? And, um, you know, as far as the holding tank for the hot water heater, again, we're going to have to come and say, all right, well, we have no hot water. By law, we have shut down our schools. Where do you want us That's to on your list, is it not? It is. I, so my... So it, it, so if I understand. Now, go ahead. I'm if sorry. you're spending all of that money or asking us to spend it, then... You know, if something comes up, then it'll be up to you guys to decide what are you going to do. So okay. that's that's your call. I mean, it's not our reserves are the savings that we've that we've worked for. That's totally up to the board of finance. Okay. Um. I, I I have a feeling that um, some of this is going to have to go. Yep. Well, we don't have eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars in our reserves anyway, so right. we can't start with that. Um, just for reference, last year the board of finance asked us to take. Well, we started with four hundred seventy-three thousand dollars out of our reserve. And ended up taking out six hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars because of the additional projects. Um, the year before, we took two hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars out of reserves. So every year, we do take a portion of that, but that has considerably dwindled um, up until two thousand twenty-three. The board of finance, or sorry, two thousand twenty-two, the board of finance had funded our capital reserves by one hundred thousand dollars. In twenty twenty-two, you gave us nothing, which is you know understandable. It was a rough year. Um, and now we're down to 50000 So we've actually been, if you do another year of 50000 only, that's a lot less than what we used to have. Um, just And you have not decreased the request of funding out of our reserves. So you've decreased how much you yep, give for us, but, but you haven't decreased what you asked from us. So um, those reserves at one point were healthy, I would say, um, and we were comfortable with the requests that you had for those past years of those amounts, 363, 237, 473, and last year it was $629,000 out of our reserves. So we have historically funded a good portion of the requests that the Board of Education has required. I can't do the, av the average of those numbers that you just rattled off so I in my head. Could but what try to rat rattle them, but they're probably around the $400,000 range each year, but partially because we had a healthy fund balance and we kept money in there for things like coming to you about the ADA platform which the state required us to move forward coming to us for the generator we would not be able to come to us and say we have the money in our reserves are you okay if we take the money out of the reserves and do these projects we would not be able to do that Understood. it would be we need yep. to have this project done where are you guys going to come up with the money because we know Got we're going to have it so that's that's the big difference there so we we do have over the years carried the lion's shares of our requests over the years. So, um, so. I mean, that's up to the Board of Finance. If you want to wipe out the reserves, that's that's your call. You know, that's not that's not our call. But understand, when they're gone, I would be concerned, like if, with this bathroom situation. It's not a line item item. It's not in capital. We have no money in our reserves. That's going to be up to you guys to decide how are we going to pay for it. So I, I'm putting it back on your court. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. <laughs> Thank you, Harvey. Eric, do you have anything at this time? I do. <clears throat> um, first, thank you very much for the recap and everything. Um, going down the list here, a couple of questions um, having to do with the curtain at the high school. 
I know, Newt, you mentioned something, I think it was over the weekend on Saturday, that the framing for the curtain itself may be okay. Have we gotten mm -hmm. anything back from that? So, no. And we haven't gotten it back for some unknown reason. Things that turn slow when they <laughs> send everything out to them, and I'm still waiting to hear back. Yeah. And the, the only company that responded, unfortunately, is from California. So everything is being done, the phone and um, pictures and everything. That's how it's being done. Okay. They're the only ones that responded. I reached out to uh, five companies that were recommended, and they were the only ones that responded. Okay. Um, so I've been working with them. Now, that could be, you know, I don't want to throw a number at it, but the guy for the curtain seemed to think that this would be, uh, enough money here, maybe with some little cushion, not much, but that's for the curtain and the framing. Yes. Okay. Now, if the framing ends up being okay, what are we looking at just for the curtain? Ballpark. But the curtain. I won't hold you to a number. The curtain actually came in quite a bit cheaper. The curtain came in just under between like twenty six thousand, twenty six and change. So that came. The curtain came in pretty good. It's the track. And you know, it's all the work that they, that's, that's the big, I was thinking that different. I was thinking the curtain was going to be more than the track, but it's actually opposite. <clears throat> Very good. Um, the next thing that I, you know, a lot of this other stuff, <clears throat> I understand the mandates, safety concerns, and all that other stuff. I can't sit here and even begin to question those. I have kids that went through the school system. Um, you know, I know Rebecca has kids, and Joe, you have kids too, right? Yeah, I have a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I think we can all appreciate the safety and the concern with that, with the, with the students and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> uh, a suggestion or recommendation: um, the high school roof or the the field house roof. When I was younger, I'm an Eagle Scout. I redid a, a shed roof. Um, I don't. I'm familiar with. The field house down there, I don't know how big it is, but um, to save money, reach out to a Boy Scout group to see if that's something that they can do. I know Lowe's and Home Depot and whatnot, they have a certain amount of money per month or whatever it is that they can donate that material to, and then they can do a, 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 a a uh, student, or I'm sorry, a, a scout could do, redo the roof as an eagle project. <clears throat> um, so you would approve that? Yeah, I'm um, speaking for myself. Yes, absolutely, because I think that's something. It's it's something that not only <coughs> he or you know he or she could do. Um, it's something that all the scouts can take part. In. It's not just one individual scout doing it. It's a group of scouts doing it. And it's something that they can carry over into, into life and use it as a life skill. That's absolutely 100%. Just looking at policy in regard to well, insurance sure. and safety Correct. and all that. And see if we can, volunteers are so hard. We're having a rough time getting volunteers to man a hot dog stand. Yeah. You know, so. <coughs> I think that the parents and the and the athletes as well as the staff kind of looks at it that the town should maintain their buildings mm -hmm. as well. Right. So and I'm not disagreeing. I, I wish that our volunteer base would come together more mm -hmm. and do more. Right. But it is what it is at this point. Right. Right. Okay. Um I know also, new. you mentioned something about the zero-turn mower that you guys were looking at a lease. Was that from the, was that on the town side or was that the? So we're doing a lease on the town side. Okay. This would be the first one. Okay. So we're trying to feel our way through it and see how it works out. In the perfect world, it sounds great, but I want to at least try one. Okay. Go from there. I don't want to get stuck in two leases. Follow up with that is... The town currently owns a zero turn, correct? We have one for the school. One for the school. That's the other, it. That's it. The other one burned. The other one blew up. At least you want to buy mine. <laughs> 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 right. 
And these prices are state bid list. There's no, this is cheap as we can get them. Okay. All right. Um, as far as, you know, answer a question about, you know, how far down do I want to see the reserve? Personally, I, I think you need to keep something in there. That's just my opinion. God forbid something happens. Um, because if we drain it down and then you guys come back to us, then we're sitting here thinking to ourselves, where are we coming up with the money? So that's just my opinion. Whether it's popular or not, I don't know, but. I would agree with you. Well, that's all I got. Good, all right. Um, I think, just because I whine about this at every meeting, um, it's a good time to restate. I think, um, I think all of us would agree that we're not experts or carry, carry no uh, credit hours in the knowledge of what it takes to um, fund a, uh, the educational system or what each student needs. It's an overwhelming thing, and um, I give you a lot of credit for doing it. Um, I think what's, what's been, I know everyone wants to see our students uh, well, well taken care of, wants our, want all of our employees to be compensated appropriately. I think that uh, we're just up against, it's no one's fault in this room, and I'm sorry, I know everybody hears me whine about this all the time, but uh, we're all fighting inflation, right? So we're on the same team with that. Uh, I think this is what is killing our community. I walked out of here on Saturday and just with my head down and uh, feeling like we were failing, and then I cheered myself up by looking at what other towns are going through, and I'm still feeling good about <coughs> what we're doing. Um, we want everybody to succeed. I don't think that it's fair uh, to ask this question, but we're, what I, I'm going to do it anyhow. Um, I, I don't like what ifs, but I'm curious of if the budget moved forward the way that we presented it coming out of our meeting the other day, um, that we reduced the, the request by, say, a quarter of a million dollars. And let's say we didn't fund any capital. What, what's the Board of Ed's next move? I mean, do we, are, are we up against a point here where, because as you are, and I appreciate walking through the last couple of years, Cindy, thank you for, because uh, it is important to remember that it used to be a much higher balance. And on the town side, we've been doing the same thing too. Uh, just in, in my limited experience, our fund balance is being diminished every year. So, so it's the reality of where we are, and we're going to have to, this certainly is not going to get better in the next couple of years. So. Uh, so we're all going to be in the same boat. Um, I think at some point the paradigm is going to shift a little bit and either taxation is going to creep out of control like we're seeing in other communities. Uh, or we're going to see, depending on what the taxpayers want to do and vote for a refer referendum, we're going to have significant cuts that's eventually going to you know, cut into payroll and, and jobs and everything. I'm just curious, and, and it's really just trying to, have a healthy conversation. Um, do you walk out and say, we're not going to fund any capital and we'll, we'll deal with, uh, we will come back and sit in front of the Board of Finance and say, you need to figure out a way to pay for this emergency situation? Um, do you look at reductions in, uh, in employment? I, I just think it's important to see what we're looking at, what the community's looking at. Uh, this is where we ended up, as you all remember, last summer, uh, trying to figure out what, where the town and, and where the, the board ed comes back at us with, if we have significant cuts. I mean, does that question make sense? I know it's a what if, and I don't like it, to entertain those. Yes, it, it does make sense. But um, last year, there were a lot of disgruntled parents with the cuts that were made. Um, you heard it at the meetings. Um, the problem was that in the very first vote, people didn't get out to vote. That was why it failed. And all of the um, issues that didn't really involve the Board of Education, um, mainly the ambulance um, and that group that really took a hit at the budget and took a hit at a lot of people. Um, 
You can say it's up to you. No, you're not going to do capital. I will tell you that there's a lot of parents that are going to be disappointed and concerned. We have maintained our attrition rate of our students not going to Xavier, not going to Mercy for the most part, not going up to Xavier and the magnet schools. If we let our schools deteriorate, and they're going to deteriorate quickly if we don't do these things. And I think that you're going to find that you're going to wind up undoing all of the work that the Board of Ed has tried to do in the last year, bringing on a new superintendent, working with our new business manager for now two years, working with our facilities manager, and finally, we have a great team in place. And we have the ability to kind of get our, our, our school up and going. Don't forget, we have NESAC coming up. I always say that wrong. Our BS <laughs> yes. um, coming up in two years. And they will be doing a site visit to the high school next year. And they will be going through with a fine tooth comb. One of the things they look at is your capital projects. They look at the maintenance of the property. They look at, you know, where you have grown in different um, areas. You start fooling around with that, you start fooling around with your accreditation. And I, I've been through that before when my kids were little. Maureen, I don't know if you were, I mean, your kids are the same age as mine. Um, so, you know, you were here then too. And it was nasty. I don't want to risk not having good maintenance at our high school, having a stage that, you know, we use that, that room. And, you know, we use it for our town meetings. And the curtain doesn't close. The stage lighting, you know? Imagine if we wind up with a fire in there. What do you think people are gonna say? Because we can't have a town meeting anywhere else. That's where we hold them. So I guess that answers kind of my que your question, I hope, that what ifs, we could, you could be lucky, you could bite, you know, the bullet for another year or so, or you could wind up with a big problem. I, I'll I, take it. I yep. think we would be responsible. We would use the reserves. We, we would prioritize a building that's a shelter. We don't want to risk having water heaters aren't functioning, closing the building down. I, that's that's no choice. You would leave us no choice, right? So just to give you some numbers of breakdowns of things on this list, so you have one hundred fifty-five thousand dollars worth of stuff that um, probably is going to break in the next, I don't know, two boilers, <laughs> pretty soon. Um, you've got one hundred ten thousand dollars worth of things that are mandated by the state of Connecticut. So no matter what we do, we're going to come to you at $265,000 and say this is going to happen. Um, you've got $229,000 worth of the things that are either safety or ADA required on this list. So you're right now at $494,000. We don't have that in our reserves. Um, we have $50,000 worth of items that are already in progress that we would have to halt and move forward to another year. We have $103,000 worth of the maintenance that... that um, Patty was talking about that does keep everything up and going and saves us from having to do a hundred thousand dollar painting project in a year for the entire school. Um, so those sort of things, a hundred thousand dollars worth of carpeting in a year. So those kind of maintenance things are very important to us. Um, additionally to that, you have the only thing out there that's really like uh, on the fence might be the hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of lights at the middle at the auditorium, only because we're hoping that Eversource can help us out with that. Not because it doesn't need to be done. But we're hoping that maybe we have some funding along this. So right off the bat, even before I get into our annual maintenance, we don't have enough money. And that is for the requirements, things that we already know that we're going to have to come to you and say, help, we can't do this. So I just just wanted to kind of break this. This sheet that I gave you was in money order, mm -hmm. not in important order. Um, so if you look at it as the required maintenance, safety, security mandates, that sort of thing, 
that kind of gives you a general idea of where our figures end up. So one way or another, we're short. We don't have enough money. I wanted an extreme picture, so that did the job. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Mr. Gelson? Yes, thank you. I have about eight things to say and ask. Um, number one, thank you very much for coming to today and clearly stating the problem. The first clear picture I've had of the condition of the school systems in this town, as bad as it looks. And it's really a result of things not done in the past. I'm not blaming anyone, but it all adds up to this. We have to be very careful. And we're not the only town in this situation, I happen to know. You go to any part of the country, particularly the small towns, they're all in the same boat. But this state has a propensity to lay down unfunded mandates on small towns, which are very expensive. I have some ideas about that. So thank you very much for coming out this afternoon. And it's, we got a tough job to do. But I must warn you, yes, we're part of this Board of Finance, and you folks too. But the ultimate decision made by the taxpayers, which we're reminded of, at every public hearing each year in the past few years, as well as the referendum. You have to keep that in mind. Number three, uh, you stated out uh, very nicely listed these items, and you have required maintenance, annual maintenance, mandated, and so forth. Um, I think it'd be helpful to us and to the taxpayers if you uh, clearly called out those items that are health and safety. In my mind, that comes first. We have to do that. We don't want to be a John Winthrop or a fire in the building or kids getting sick because the air conditioning, air conditioning system is dirty. That was $229,000. 229 mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, That's not including the mandates. Not including the mandates. Okay. Uh, health and safety. So if you could, if I ask, uh, I'm asking yes. as a member of the Board of Finance. Yes. Yep. If you can make up, make the same list and organize it. Yep, yep, I can do that. What's health and safety? The second thing is what is building repair. And the third items that are building maintenance. Because I have an opinion about building maintenance, what you call annual maintenance. To me, that's more, I got to check with the accountant, with the Board of Finance. To me, that's more of an expense mm -hmm. than of capital. It should be an expense. It should be an operation expense. Yeah. And I think the taxpayers will, will probably recognize that themselves. And uh, because we have several large buildings now for school system, for schools, and large buildings come with high maintenance. And unless they're made of titanium, but we can't afford that. So, uh, and then uh, 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 keep the reserves. And I want to. I'm a little fuzzy on this, I must admit. What you call reserves is the 422 number you quoted? So the, yes, so over since 2011, the Board of Finance has um, allowed the Board of Education to take any funds that we have not expended at the end of the, any operating funds that were not expended at the end of the school year and put them into a fund um, for cap, meant specifically at that time, I think in 2011, and I believe it's under Board of Finance policy, but I don't read your policy. I'm sorry, I should. <laughs> Um, but I, to go to uh, put aside for a Board of Education capital reserves. Um, the state of Connecticut does allow or does require, or, I don't know what the word is, allow, I guess, that 2% of anything left over it does. But the Board of Finance has always been um, very good about taking any additional operating funds at the end of each year and putting it into this reserve for us. And that reserve has been um, up and down over the years. Uh, last year we only had forty three thousand dollars left, <laughs> so we have not we have not filled our reserves because we've been so close on our operating every year. I, I just want to add to the reserves that policy when it was in place um, was put in place because we didn't want the board of education and the superintendent end of the year splurging and surplus. Right. You know, so that's why we put it there. And it was like, okay, so put it in your savings account. And that's really hmm. where it is. And it's, yeah. it's worked out really well. You know, and I think it has. Go on, Tom. Okay, well, thank you very much for those comments. 
So the bottom line is that's all you got for reserves. There's no other cash in the in the back lot. Buy a tree. <laughs> no. We are, we, we are cash only. poor here yeah. at the uh, okay. <laughs> Nothing in lockers. <laughs> no, nope. I checked all the lockers. I checked under all the desks. <laughs> no, the taxpayers will be asked that question as well. So that, yeah. that's what you have. We need to know what we need to know what the cash is on your side as well as our side. I'll get that a little bit later here. Okay. As far as the unfunded mandates, I think it's time that the towns, and the small towns particularly, uh, even the small cities, get together and go back to the state. You guys, okay, you need this, you mandate this, help us pay for it because we can't do that right now. We got other things to pay for. We, I really mean that's what we have to do. We have to make it aware to people this is painful. Oh, yeah, it's well intentioned, but it's painful. Yes, I want to speak to that. I went to the um, CABE meeting, which is Connecticut Association of Board of Education. Um, Dr. Tabrita went with me as well. Um, and it was our whole region of like, was it 12 or 16 towns? And some of the state legislators were there. Um, and we spoke directly to them very firmly in regard to these mandates and them not being funded, especially the special education. Um, and I have additionally, as chair, reached out and going to be setting up a meeting with the ones that are in our state rep and state senate kind of group and calling them in and listing off these problems because they're real. They are. And we have to address them. And I'll invite you to that meeting, Todd. I'd love to go. I seriously and, will and the invite you. parents of the kids in the school system. Yes. As well as parents of kids who used to have kids in the school system. I'll invite system. you too, Joe. Need to, that's <laughs> right. Need, need to go. It needs to be made aware. And I'll get that a little bit later here. Okay. Um, and then we have to, on our side, you already told me that's all the cash you got. Okay. <laughs> On our side, Board of Finance, I believe, speaking as a member of the Board of Finance, not speaking for the Board of Finance, that we need to scrub through our entire finances in this town and find out whether there's money we can use this year for this, this type of activity. I don't know what exists, but we'll have to find out. Okay. And we, uh, it's interesting you came to us today because one of the we, realizations we came to in our previous workshops, particularly on Saturday, we got a lot of roads and bridges work to do. Because the roads and bridges of this town are in a similar shape to your school buildings. Right. And, uh, and as I pointed out the last time you attended this meeting a week ago, that uh, it really casts a bad impression for people coming to town driving on a road that's not whole. And a business in particular, well, I'm not going to bring my business here and go somewhere else. So roads and bridges are important, not, not only for that, but also for health and safety. Right. And then we have the schools. So we have two entities, very large, very important. No, no, nobody questions their importance. There's no sane person anyway. That they're there, but they also come with a big ticket, right. big dollar figure. So that's something we have to, we're beginning to uh, get a hold of. Now, um, we should also look for any way that people can help do this work. And Eric made an excellent example of the Eagle Scout projects. Just go to the Conservation Commission. They've used the Eagle Scouts a number of times. Yeah. And they built bridges. We helped them build the bridges. Yeah. It can be done. Uh, and engineered bridges with, with people doing following the plans, which is real important. And you do that, you'll be all right. And, uh, and doing various other things uh, on our open space land in, in town. I, I, I can see kids and their parents helping roof that field house you've got. I think it's an excellent idea, Eric. Thanks for bringing it up. And other things like that can be done as well. Okay, um, and number seven is, I already talked about that, how much money is available. We have a fund balance. We keep very close track of. We don't over over uh, use it uh, but there is some flexibility there and it is money 
I won't say it's $100 million, but it's something that can be used toward the effort because your prioritized list, every dollar is going to be critical to get down as far as you can on that list. And the last thing I want to say is that um, all this is information and it's thought. And I'll say again, I said it last week, and I apologize for repeating it, but it's really important. Equally informed people seldom disagree. And that's what bothers me at each one of these public hearings we go to each year. We try to make people equally informed, but they're not. And, and, and we clear up as best we can. And people have their opinions, not much you can do about that. But the more you give them hard facts and clear, honest knowledge, information, the better our chances we're going to make a good decision. And I'll leave it with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Todd. Welcome. Thanks, Todd. Maureen? So, a couple of things. I just wanted to make sure you guys understand. We The whole list is $4 million of all the capital. And, you know, with such a slight increase in the, in the um, grand list, we, the, we pretty much picked nothing off that list. We, we don't have money for anything on that list. We, I think we ended up saying, like, one mile of road repair and a temporary bridge for a culvert that's about to wash out. Like, we are down to bare bones with what we were able to put on the table. So I just didn't want you to feel that like we cut all your stuff or didn't you know didn't put your stuff on the list at the expense of all the other stuff. We picked like two things off this whole list that are, are going to be an option. Um, and I just wanted to ask and bear with me. I appreciate you guys um, educating me since I'm so new. But I'm just wondering. So I know you've got have that option for the little reserves. Does the town does the town have the same thing? Do they have the reserves if some of these Things that we didn't put like explode during the year. What? No. Oh, we don't have a reserve. Okay, so then just put it like quickly. What like what do we do if if they come to us or the town comes to us and says we need a hundred thousand dollars for a bridge at Sheepskin Hollow? Like we 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 find it somewhere. We Is it unassigned fund balance. Unassigned fund balance or financing for large projects. Okay. Okay, so we don't. So our, I guess the unfortunate but we don't go broke yeah. some reserve I guess right that's yeah. a our our surplus should there be a surplus at the end of a fiscal year would roll back to fund balance okay okay um, personally I would fund I would fund them all as as we listen to you guys talk and the other department heads talk every single one sounds important and the thought of you know again being my new year I was like oh sure get all this great stuff done in town this would be super until I saw the bottom on the last page and realized that, that this wasn't going to happen. So um, I agree with other comments that, I'm, unfortunately, I, I just don't know that we're going to be able to do it all. I hope we have some wiggle room to get some things onto a list. But I just wanted you guys to understand, like, the gravity of where these, yeah. where we were with this. And, and I understand. And, you know, sadly... It's the same story every year. Grand list yeah. didn't grow. Um, yeah. You know, we're losing business or something has now come off the grand list. When we lost Frank Davis Resort, it, well, Sunrise, Macamudas, whatever you want to call it, we lost that. We lost Franklin. You know, we never got um, good pilot money from you know from the good speed after all that housing was built down in the center and it's an ongoing issue yeah, absolutely and i feel like every single year it's like let's reduce because we can't we can't do all of these projects the problem here guys is not the projects the project the problem is the income and until there's a change in the amount of income that comes into this town, and every time it even you say development of any what which way, someone says Walmart. Walmart's not coming to East Haddon, guys, and we all know that. But it seems like the Board of Education, the Fire Department, the Library, Parks and Recs, 
all get punished, if you will, and our roads get punished because we don't have the base in town. Well, I mean, I don't know punish. We have what we have to work with. But to right. Joe's point earlier, I just pulled up the numbers. And to Todd's point, at the end of the day, the, the voters decide what the budget's going to be. So I pulled up the numbers from last year because I was curious. So after three referendums, we ended up with a $650,000 increase from one year to the next, 1.8. It took three referendums to get there, two sets of cuts. So I, I come into today concerned with, already concerned with how we left it Friday. Um, and this is the juggling thing here, like guessing what the appetite of the townspeople is. That's, that's, that's the whole juggling game here. Um, do they, will they, will they understand the concerns or will they say 5% increase in this economy is crazy, go back, you know, go back to the chopping board. So I, that's the fact that it was a $650,000 increase after, for, on a third referendum concerns me that there is not an appetite for that kind of, for the kind of increase we already have in the budget. So again, I know Todd mentioned some places for wiggle room. I hope we can. But I think that it's important that the townspeople do get a say before we say, if you, I think that the townspeople, number one, have the right to know that this is the list. And if you cut this list, they don't have a chance to vote on it. And you're right. They did have a chance to vote. They made it very clear. And it was extremely clear on why the first and the second didn't go through. And a lot of that had to do with people not showing up to vote. And a large mass of people voting down. Will that happen again? I don't, I don't know. Hopefully nothing will blow up like that again. But I think that with the energy that I am seeing as the chairman of the board, with our new superintendent, and with the new board of education, I really believe that we can get parents out there and rally them to support our budget. We can't take another year of getting you know, going in with a budget and then getting 300000 taken out. And that's what happened to us last year. So we're already behind on a lot of projects that we wanted to do last Absolutely. year. Absolutely. I mean, I, like I said, I feel your pain. $4 million. To speak to your point, and I wasn't here last year, so I say this very respectfully, but there was a tremendous amount of drama in the community that interfered with getting accurate information out, if you will. Right. And will the townspeople have an opportunity to speak, to vote? They won't if you cut us at the knees. Thank you. Thanks, Maureen. Rebecca? So at the end, there's very few things to speak upon. So I definitely appreciate Maureen's comments. Um, I did want to provide a little more information on this unassigned fund balance. Um, Todd and I actually wrote an article on that a year or two ago. So we do have unassigned fund balance, but there's a series of blessings, so to speak, and approvals and town meetings that have to go forth in order to utilize those funds for the examples that I apologize for being late I was working okay. but anyways when I came in I heard you talking about the hot water heater um, the stage lighting and all that so <clears throat> yeah the unassigned fund balance is available but we just have to go through some approvals for that um, yeah so we're in a really difficult situation here and I understand the points you all are trying to convey and everyone before me that has stated that we have to really understand what the taxpayer is going to approve. Um, I have to say, I'm not sure which direction we're all going to go with this budget because, you know, we're a board, so I can't, you know, make that decision. But I just wanted to share that we really need to get, like, the PTO on board with this. And um, 
Um, I know Patty, you and I have had some conversations on that and Todd and, you know, for some uh, business that had happened early on in the year, I did call the um, PTO and speak, spoke with someone directly and the matter at hand, um, they knew nothing about it and it was kind of coming up on, you know, the end where the decision had to be made. So, and I was combing through the PTO's minutes um, you know, and it's, it seems like they do a lot of wonderful things for our teachers, but I'm kind of wondering if they're understanding what's going on here and if we're going to end up um, providing money for the education system more than what we're doing now. We really need to make sure that they're, on, they're in the know and that these things are being discussed with the parents and everyone's aware of it so that, you know, if we're going to add more money to the budget to handle, you know, this huge list of items that we need, we need to make sure they got our backs and have people come out. So um, just trying to be fair, address the parent side of this. So, um, oh, I did have a clarifying question. So again, I came in late, so I'm, I may have missed this, but the policy where the money shifts from operations to reserves, I think you said 43,000, was that correct? No, no, the, last year was all we gave. So right. the, yes. the policy, the, since 2011, the Board of Finance um, made the decision that any operating funds left over from a Board of Education um, at the end of the fiscal year uh, would be moved into this Board of Education capital reserves. Mm -hmm. They also decided to fund us, and back then it was $100,000 a year into this, operate, into this reserve so that we had those funds available. Um, that got cut to $50,000 after 2022, your portion of it. Um, we have over the years at some point been able to fund into that because of leftover operating um, uh, balances up to upwards of two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars of our two million dollar budget which is less than one percent so it sounds like a lot of money but it's really not um, last year we cut it down like we were so close on our budget that we only funded the reserves by forty three thousand dollars okay. that makes me very nervous as a business manager i don't like seeing forty three thousand dollars left over <laughs> So, so hold on, that, that cuts it really close. So that was as of the end of, uh, hold on, 23. 23, right. So, so that's all we added to the, the reserves, at, excuse me, at the end of 23. Okay, so following that same logic, do we have any idea where we're going to land at the end of this current fiscal year? If we get to 43, I'll be happy. Okay. We're, we're very tight. It's a very, very tight year. And, okay. Uh, people are being very fiscally responsible on the expenditures on the sides. Okay. Um, but things are breaking, unfortunately, and that seems to cut into considerable amounts of our, both our operating, and we do have a shared balance um, for things that break, but a lot of things are coming out of the operating as well. And we have special education, we did not get the excess costs that we estimated, that sort of thing. So there are some overages that we are trying to balance throughout the entire budget. Okay. We have we have put the um, and it was prior to Dr. Tabrillo coming on a soft freeze already once this year, um, and the soft freeze was you can't buy anything unless it was like desperate, and it had to be triple approved. You know, even if it was in your budget and everything. So we've gone through this cycle, and now things that are in the budget currently, we're okay. But there, Dr. Tabrito is actually pulling back on different things, and we're looking at line items and everything as well. Okay. And to your point, um, Rebecca, I totally agree with you in regard to the PTO, getting them more involved. Um, Dr. Tabrito has been doing a lot of community outreach, and we'll continue to do that as well as a board. Um, there was a time when our PTO was extremely active in coming to um, Board of Finance meetings, Board of Education meetings. You saw them all over the place. And over the years, they've kind of graduated and moved on. And it seems like, you know, like everyone is saying, volunteer base is falling off more and more. But you can rest assured that we will be definitely you know, championing our budget and what's going on in our schools now. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you for that. Um, my last thought is I think we really need to pursue um, an exit 
survey again this year and maybe be prepared to do that the first time around. I'm not, again, I'm not sure which direction we're gonna go on this overall budget the first time around, but as elected members of this board, we have our own self-interest obviously, but we also need to be aware of what everyone else is thinking. We need to know. I mean, I may not agree with everyone, but we need to be aware of what everyone wants or does not want. Right. So I really encourage it, another exit uh, poll survey, whatever you want to call it. So. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. Patty? I, I know that the process is that now you'll make your determination, you turn it over to the selectmen, and then typically we have the public hearing and then the town meeting to vote to go forward. What if we added one additional step, which is here we are, right here and now, East Haddam, this is where we're at, and present them with the budget and say, are you going to basically say, what are your thoughts on this um, before we even go to public hearing? Do we have time to do that? Do we have time to call a town meeting and have a discussion and inform about the budget? Well, I think we could certainly do something informal. Um, as far as the actual process, I know it's all right, mandated that's through the, the legal calendar. Process, yeah. right. But if you and I want to get together and try to whip up some support to do something informally, we can get the space. I think that, that wouldn't, um, you know, certainly anything that would help to improve in communications, we'd be all for. When do you have to make the decision of what goes to? I believe we have to. Tonight. <laughs> we're, we're aiming for tonight, but I believe that um, April 1st is our, our sure deadline. Is that correct, Monday. Valerie? That's that's Monday. That, was, that would be Monday. Yeah, we have no time. So we have no time to do Well, that we could, I mean, right, right. What's actually put forward, sure. But we could still do something informally to, to communicate better where we, uh, where we are at that. Yeah. Well, the Citizen's Guide will go out after tonight to communicate. Right. In the newspaper, like it does every year. Probably headed to the second lesson. Anyway, so the public hearing is going to happen. You'll hear what. Why do you think why that we're going to? Why were you saying that we're going to have? I'm just saying that if, if you're if you're going to have a public hearing, you're going to hear all about how people feel about the budget. Yeah, that's the opportunity, that's right? The yeah, right, but I don't think that you should be saying hearing. that we're going to wind up with two referendums. Well, we can't go negative, right? Right. I mean, just that's going to be positive. I I, I got to tell you, Patty, going to the people and asking for five percent is a lot, especially coming out of last year. I just. I look at that and I go, okay, let's try it. That's where we're at. That's a lot. The public is, hearing will be. I was here last year. I agree. And we were cutting dollars, quarters, to try and get to a referendum, and we went three times. And I'm a hundred percent understanding that it was for painful. three times the amount that we got through last year. And unfortunately, uh -huh. our roads are falling apart. Our fire department building was never built correctly. Apparently our fire department and building just got fixed, one section of the wall today. It's okay. crumbled. And our, our schools it's need it. happening. I know. We need business in town, bottom line. That's the bottom line. Working on it. Well, yes, sir. $5 million in open space in today. <laughs> we need to actually fish or cut bait. Um. Let me see if I can summarize briefly what I heard. Maybe different from, maybe entirely different from what everybody else heard. Um, you've gone through on these capital items and shifted down the road till next fiscal year um, 340,000. 340, the list that you believe is very, very important is this 880,000. Um, you have a capital reserve amount on hand at the moment of 422,000. But if I understood correctly, um, over the past few years, you have drawn on that for unforeseen emergencies to the tune of about 400,000. 
So dipping into that, that they're <laughs> leaving reasonable elbow room for the unforeseen, there's not much there in your reserves. Right? The only item on here that I'd like to ask one quick question about is the um, stage lighting. There's the possibility that because you're using the auditorium as educational space that Eversource will pick up on that? That's the possibility. The whole thing or? The whole, the whole lighting. Thing. Yeah. Um, again, not to hold anybody accountable here, but if you were, if you were a betting person, would you <laughs> bet they'll do it? <laughs> so the, every week calls. the contractor is confident, but we have not got that sign off from our source yet. Okay. That's all we're waiting on. The contractor is, I'm not going to say 100%, but he's pretty close. Okay. But we're just waiting for that one signature. Okay. So to that point, that might be something that we take off of taxation, you know, take out because we're somewhat and is a gamble and we can always come back to you if we need it well, fund from balance. I, I, it, with everyone's indulgence, I'll make a proposal and then you can throw stones at it. Um, I suggest that we fund the capital here for the Board of Ed um, for um, what would it be Thank you, Cindy. You're welcome. <laughs> 730,000 and the um, not touch their reserves, right? And with the, with, with the hope that our bet comes through. And Thank you for making I'm feeling confident at, too. But I'm right. <laughs> and you and I will both go out and buy a lottery ticket tomorrow morning. And if we win, we'll pledge it to the town. How's that? Deal. Right? And if ever a source comes through, we keep it. Okay, that's, I mean, well, let me say, I'm sorry to run on here, but say one more thing. I make that proposal kind of in the, the hope, the aspiration that, um, Folks will get behind this and understand what's important about it and turn out and vote. Right? Mm -hmm. I, if, if only the people in this room were to vote, we'd probably be able to pass this. But the rest of us um, in town may or may not feel that way. <coughs> but it's a matter of getting your vote out. And I 100 percent in agreement with you, Harvey. And I'll just make one comment. If you remember on the second referendum public hearing, um, I received a call at 4 o'clock saying that the chairman of the board was not able to come. And Cindy had to sit in for um, our prior superintendent. And that did hinder us quite a bit as far as speaking because we had thought that we didn't know what we were doing. That um, other people were going to be handling that. Halfway through that meeting, I was receiving post messages that our superintendent had just signed a contract in another location. So last budget season was pretty rough on us. We will be prepared. There are almost no limit to the amount of rotten tomatoes that you're going to get thrown at you, as are we. So I'll make tomato sauce. Good thing. Anyway, that's my suggestion. And all right, so stay with me here for a minute. So we we reduced by a quarter million dollars. We added a half million in fund balance. But if we put 730 back, we're right back to where we started, right? 
Do you want to add the 730 to the 675? Not yet. Not yet. My question. Okay. So, uh, I'm suggesting, I guess, that we're gathered to make a some kind of a stab at Board of Ed Capital, and I just threw out a suggestion. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping notes. What, what we do with the town capital, we haven't got to yet. So, what I'm afraid of, and where ideologically I don't disagree that obviously all this stuff needs to get done, but and this is where I was Saturday, and this is where I continue to be. So we had we were looking at it from two extremes on Saturday, right? We were talking, we were talking on one side cutting a million dollars from the budget, and on the other side we were talking about raising it, whatever the final number was that we were coming at. Um, so my thought process was. Try to hit somewhere in the middle, which is the number that we kind of came out with, and try not to activate either side, the group that wants to, that says taxation is too high, or the group that says we're, we're killing America's youth by not providing for their needs. I'm afraid if we, well, I want to fund that, um, I think that's going to activate an extreme of, of uh, townspeople that will vote it down for taxation being too high, personally. I don't know, but I'd be, but I appreciate you teeing up, Harvey, with an idea, because otherwise I'd, I'd sit here all day. What's everybody else's feeling on that? Well, I mean, like I said in, in my remarks, there's four million here altogether, about a million's Board of Ed. They came in, knocked off. 340 to prioritize the list. But that's only 25% of the list. There's three more million on here. Police, body armor, I mean, a lot of other health and safety things. So I don't think we can talk about the Board of Ed capital in a vacuum. I think we need to, like, I don't think we can start and say, we'll give them that without addressing the whole list. There are, like, part two and part three of some projects that we, we just weren't going to fund. We can't. We can't fund part two and part three. Right. So I think if we're going to talk about it, I think we need to talk about it as a whole. Okay. Look, I, my only so uh, part, I don't know if it's really following up on what you're saying or not, but um, going to the voters with where we ended up on Saturday was um, three quarters of a mil tax increase. Right, a 5% right. increase in the budget. Right, but it, it, it uh, but three quarters of a mil Before. or approximately 3% increase in the mill rate. 3.15% increase. Is that what it ended up It wasn't with? four mils, it was... Uh, Point, I forgot, oh, damn it. It was 3.15%. Uh, the, the increase in the reliance on uh, taxes. The tax, yeah. That's, the, that's what this sheet will show you is the reliance on the tax increase. But w where I'm going with this is um, it, to go to the town people with a budget that basically shortchanges needs, roads, maintaining the school, buildings, and so on and so on, police body armor and so on, um, and say, we're not going to fund that stuff because we're afraid you won't pass it, is a little bit irresponsible because those things have to be done. I mean, you can't run a railroad without <laughs> putting coal in the boiler. Right? And I'm afraid that, that, that we're um, too afraid of getting somebody saying no. Mm -hmm. 
rather than doing the job of proposing a responsible keeping keeping the lights on, keeping the kids getting educated kind of budget. If people want to vote it down, then I, I can't help but say, all right, you don't want to do it, but we told you, we, we gave you a, a shot at what was responsible in our humble opinion as a board of finance. And if you don't agree, that's right, but we've done our job then. And we can always go back and cut, because we did last year. <laughs> and we may have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. I don't know. Well, yes, sir. As the superintendent said, hopefully we'll have the drama this year that we had last year. That was an unexpected uh, event that had unintended consequences. And, and to be honest, there was drama on the board of ed side. That's what Patty was also trying to yeah, say. Yeah, we we're well like aware of that. storm. Was, I mean, a terrible storm. Well, the reassessment didn't help. It muddied the, the waters. Well, right. That was definitely. It was an election year. That heightens emotions significantly. And then you add a drama on top of that. Yeah, okay. Um, we need to, uh, to, to carry on with what Harvey's saying. I, I, I agree 100%. We know more about what's going on in the town, what the town needs, than the average citizen does at this point. One of our jobs is to communicate that, that to them as well. So we need to really outline the needs, not the wants. We need to outline the, the needs and substantiate them on both sides, education and town government. And, and uh, some people will see it right away, other people will take a little bit of time. It comes down to what the town wants to do. And this town is very pro-open space. I heard some bad things, bad comments about open space. There's a lot of advantages to open space, but in addition to that, the people in town, that's what they want. And uh, they also want to pay for the needs, and I don't think many people in this town are just going to say no just for the hell of it. And, and there may be a few, but not the majority. So we've got to go in with clearly what are the needs, the needs for this year and the needs for the future on both sides, government and education, because we all have to be on the same page. And that's what I'm thinking in my head. You, you told us what you need for, for capital, for for the ed, and I think some of that capital you listed should be inexpensive, by the way. We can talk about that later. Because that's going to, I'm sure the taxpayers are going to question that as well, not just me. And we need a clear picture of what we need on the town side. And, um, and we had, if my memory serves it correctly, we're looking at 675000 on the town side, right? The capital? And that's what's being eaten up by roads. Yeah. Yes, but th that's what we put in as a placeholder to see where we ended up. Yes. Yeah, there's but, plenty more to talk about, but we right. ended on so, roads. So, so Maureen made a, a wonderful suggestion. Uh, I threw out a proposal, and her suggestion was let's not make that decision in isolation. Let's look at what's on the town side, and then we'll get into a fist fight or something. <laughs> I mean, I know we were going down the list on Saturday, you know, seeing what, how far we could get and stuff. Um, you know, and there was a bunch of little things, like, quite frankly, my thought on this was maybe I'll throw out my suggestion taking out the lighting um, what if we cut it in thirds take a third out a third comes from reserve which would be like 240 and at the we, we try to find a third in the budget which would be another 240 so that would also we would then have to look at the town side too and pick out some other things to add in, but then it comes to the question of with the availability of funding to sort of cover that. And I, I do agree, I don't know if it was Todd or Joe who said, you know, we can't, we, we, we know, that it was you Todd, we know more about what these, the needs are than the average taxpayer. And like I said earlier, they're, they all look important. So I think communication and getting people to understand that we can't keep kicking the can down the road. 
you know, your point about the maintenance of the building was the same conversation we heard from Michelle about the condition of the roads. The further we kick the, the road maintenance down the road, it's just more expensive and it's a bigger problem. So it's, you know, it, we're, we're trying to juggle the can between the two and then, you know, not just like the townspeople, but like the, the available funding. Like, the, you know, we can only responsibly, I mean, I'm fiscally conservative, responsibly we can, you know, we can only go to the townspeople, I feel, my, my opinion, with, with a certain increase. And I don't know what that number is, but I mean, obviously we could go with them with whatever increase we wanted and, and let them have their say, but I, I'm not sure, you know, that's fiscally responsible. So there's all the juggling that needs to happen. So anyway, that's what I have to say. I think it's real important what uh, Harvey had to say. Yeah, I think he's going to point to that. We need to put our best foot out as to what the town needs to do. That's our job. And if the town doesn't feel they can afford it, then they'll come back and say, no, they'll have to go back and make some serious cuts. But they're first put out. They may be, defe may be defeated. But if we do a good job of communicating the need, uh, it will be an intelligent defeat and not a dumb, crazy one. We don't know what we're doing. So we got to, I think we got to put up, whatever the numbers are, we got to put out what the needs are for both education and government. Mm -hmm. And the needs are capital as well as expense. The whole, whole enchilada. And then we have a number, a set of numbers to work with. And we communicate that to the people in town. So we clearly understand it. And yes, a lot of them will come to the public hearing not come prior. So that's, that's a fact of life. Right. And to your suggestion about a pre-hearing is interesting. But an informational session, if you will. Right. And that may be a good idea for efficiency. So when we go to the public hearing, we're even more solid on our numbers. And a lot of people in town are aware of that and are on our side. So it makes a clear decision. I don't want to, and personally, I don't think anybody on the Board of Finance does either. We don't want to get into a negative refer referendum on the first box and then a second negative. What happens though, it's like a shark feeding frenzy in my opinion. Mm -hmm. They defeat the first one, they're they got already an edge on them, and they might right. defeat the second one anyway. And the third one just worn out. They just is voted because we cut so much by then. And we don't want to do that because that's um, like breaking rock. And, and uh, I think uh, so. Our job is to put our best foot forward. I think what Harvey was saying, and know our numbers both on the revenue side and on the expense side. Know our numbers and justify them, and make sure we don't have any wants in there, because wants are just red flags, just needs. And like start with health and safety issues, for example. That's number one on our priority list, in my mind, both for government and for education. I, I won't talk anymore. We need to put our best foot forward and communicate it. Amen. Good morning, uh, Chairman. Um, and for the heading of an audience of citizens, I don't speak for the board. Um, we heard oh, I'm sorry, yeah, would you mind coming up a little bit no, closer? No, not at all. Um, Jim Franchese, 68 Brooklyn Road, East Town. Um, we heard in the last meeting Todd and others justifiably lamenting the idiocy of prior decisions that led to increased costs later on, later on. We're sitting in a building that is an advertisement for that. This building went out of business and sat here for about a decade, <laughs> getting fallow, falling apart, costing us hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in maintenance that was not actually invested in anything <coughs> before finally the town got around to actually turning into something that was useful. And by then, the costs were up by millions. I've had some good conversations with Rebecca Watley late, and we had talked, I had talked to her about something I think about a lot. We all know or got taught at some point in our lives about the magic of compound interest. You put some money in an account somewhere, and it earns some interest, and then you earn interest on the interest. And suddenly your money sort of builds a lot faster than you would have thought. Right now we're contending with the burden of the compound disinterest. Every year that these things get ponied up 
and then ignored costs us money. I have family that lives in Regional District 4 in France. Some details I don't know that you'll be aware of, but they let their fields go to hell and finally had to get the towns to approve millions of dollars to build new fields. And a few weeks later, they suddenly discovered they had black mold, even though staff had been complaining about it for years. Now they're going to referendum on something that they openly acknowledge will not solve the moisture problems because they still have roofing issues, and they're not fixing that part of it. At some point, this stuff has to end. And I'm kind of with Todd. I, I have a feeling that in most areas, Todd and I probably disagree on just about everything politically. But he's a smart guy. And your role here is not just to protect taxpayers. It's to advocate for the town as a whole. And that means telling people when it's time to pony up, because if they don't, they're going to spend a lot more later on. And that's what's going to happen if we keep this nonsense up. And this isn't just about education, although obviously I am deeply committed to that. This is just about living in one of the nicest towns I've ever seen in my life and wanting it to stay that way. And it can't stay that way if our buildings are falling apart all over the place. There has to be some decision to do things right the first time. I spent time in East Hampton when I was getting certified to be a school administrator. And one of the things that always blew me away is all the schools had metal roofs. Wow. And they're pitched. Wow. They actually put roofs on their schools that shed water properly and last for 50 years. Yes, they spent more money up front. Overall, I suspect they spent a lot less. I'm just asking. It's a difficult thing. I, I admire what you guys do. I respect it. I know it's hard. I know it's not fun. I know that partly because I'm on the other side of it doing it in a different board. I get it. Part of our jobs is to try to advocate and educate people. Todd is right about that. And taking the easy way out by trying not to raise taxes, even though we know it's going to cost us more later, is irresponsible. I'm not saying that you guys want to do that. I'm not suggesting anything negative. Please don't take any of these comments that way. I honestly don't mean them that way. I'm just advocating. Let's get it right the first time, folks. Please. My piece. Thank you. Thank you. We're not, we're not trying to have a sub-meeting over here, but we are trying to work with you on, um, on breaking this out. And to Maureen's point, like what, what could come out of reserves and how. So if you guys want to kind of continue for five minutes, she's going to try to run another report. But I'll try to articulate it. Is that OK with you? Yeah. So while we're we'll circle back. Being responsible, can I give you my additional ads then? Absolutely. Yeah. Might as well throw it all in there so that you all know other yeah. things that are going on in town on the town side. You know, once you stopped at Rhodes, I said okay. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I want you to have plenty of time for I the cried town. I his uncle and said okay, we're done. But now in the conversation that we're having, being responsible and showing the town that these are the things we, we need. I'm going to add a few more things back in. By all means, please. The senior center air conditioning, this 13000 that we're asking for, that is a continuation of the uh, project. Do you have those? I don't have them outlined the way the Board of Ed did, because like I said, I cried uncle and said, no. okay, no. I'm done. So this is on the original list that you have. I think you're looking at it right there. Yes. <laughs> so it's about five or six down. 378. Senior center, 13000 that's, um, we've replaced two units, these are the other two. So it's just a finish of a project, but these are the... And is this the one where we got the, we got the grant for 75? For like yes, the grant, and this yeah. is the final right. portion, portion of it to finish one more unit or whatever it is. So that's one that I would like to throw back in there if you take it. 
Um, this transfer design for the compactor building, it's maybe four down from the senior center. It's that uh, is um, the building fell down in a storm, yeah. and we do have to. Unfortunately, without we can't build anything until we have a design. So we have to throw that design back in there, um, and then about four down from that, the police body armor. We think a half of that will come back in a grant, so we need at least five thousand. But those are bulletproof vests. These guys need their vests. Um, going about six down, we have a Lake Hayward dam repair of fifteen thousand dollars. That is a reserve. That's something that we have to put in. It's not quote a need. The dam is not falling down now, but Lake Hayward is a huge um, population in this town that pay additional money. For taxes and they deserve to make sure that their dam gets repaired they're already experiencing hundreds and thousands of dollars of damage up there because of all the old um, uh, runoffs and piping and old all kinds of crazy things that are going on people are losing basements and all kinds of stuff that unfortunately roads were paved up there over old culverts and all kinds of things there's umpteen problems over there. So I'm just saying that we need to take care of this dam repair and make sure that the money is there that when that, you know what, hits the fan up there, that we take care of that because that could be a huge problem. So I'm just saying, if we're talking about being responsible, that might be something. And then at the bottom of the page, there's two last things mm -hmm. down on the fire department. Mm -hmm. One is the air packs, and the other is the hose. And those two things are public safety issues that I suggest we make sure that we continue similar to the way we're trying to take care of buildings and make sure the buildings don't fall down. If we don't have a hose and it runs out and it doesn't work and it falls apart in their hands. So I'd throw those things back on and that would bring our total back up to $550,000. Appreciate that. Thank you. So can I ask the board? I know, um, I know somebody's going to say we can't do this and that's fine, but in the spirit of compromise, is there any way that we can move a relatively light conservative budget forward? And we already moved to bond the culvert for, to the tune of $800,000. Is there any appetite at all for looking to bond a significant portion of what we have for capital needs between both board, uh, between both the selectmen's budget and the board of education, is there any interest in that? To kind of um, have to put that to town meeting. Absolutely, but I'm not sure we have enough time to do that before this budget goes. I, I wouldn't expect it to be in line with the budget. Okay. Um, something independent. Um, we have to fund it in this budget. What? Fund the increase to capital project savings. Right. Um, so I had talked about throwing the five hundred thousand road thing in with the culvert, and Linda informed me. What, what was the issue, Linda? That that's the annual, or yeah, yeah. So, and like Todd said, there's some other things on here that are like annual maintenance that aren't well, really like well, here, pop up next year. <laughs> but here's right, 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 and I and I get that. I. I something has to change, right? And right now we're either looking at yeah massively increasing taxes um, or taking significant cuts and wrecking our infrastructure. What I'm proposing is I think I can make sit here and make a solid argument that the high school hot water holding tank, the stage curtain, the sidewalk project, and probably a half dozen other things. I think you can make the argument that they're capital items and um, should be treated appropriately and, and can be you are, um, could potentially be bundled, can be, we can have some additional time to communicate that to the town. Um, I, I'm just trying to find and figure out, we all want the same thing. We want these things taken care of. Uh, no one here is asking for anything that's ridiculous. Um, I think that the long-range committee can certainly talk about things like that. In in the structure of how that all works, that's their job, and what they, and they'd make a recommendation to the board of finance. 
Right, but it's been ineffective. Like we're not moving. Like I, that's why I was having a temper tantrum because we can't even stick to the list that's brought out of the committee. So, I mean, something has to change to get these projects done. That, that's my uh, my concern. Todd, Joe, do I understand you right? You're, you're you're saying you're trying to outline a plan similar to what we planned out for the roads and bridges. Correct. Instead of instead of doing it right now in this budget. Right. We do the, the most immediate stuff, like an emergency, but the rest of the stuff we'll put into a bond. That, that's exactly what I'm thinking. So we'll do the same thing for the uh, for education expenses, capital expenses. Right. I'm thinking the, the most pressing issues between both the town side and the board of ed side, um, buy a little extra time to be able to communicate that needs the, the needs to the town. <coughs> Whip up the support for it. It would have, yeah, it would have to go to referendum. But we're already looking to bond for the culvert. Um, I think it would be more favorably viewed rather than sticking it in the in the annual budget. I, I'm probably wrong. I usually am, but um, we have to figure out. We're we're in this position. We have to figure something has to change. Um, I'm just spitballing, but I, I don't think it's the worst idea I've ever had. Um, I, I, uh, I think it's a good idea. Go ahead. Thank you. The paper that we just passed out, what we were proposing was taking 163000 out of our reserves. Um, if you look at the list, the annual maintenance, the in progress, all the way down to where it says 163. Okay? And then... The taxation um, amount would remaining would be five hundred and sixty-seven thousand. So that doesn't include the lighting. I took the lighting right. out of there, but With, and we took the lighting out. So that's where you know we started at the seven thirty and and everything. But we're and then more five sixty-seven excludes the lighting. It's excludes yeah, the lighting. Excludes sorry. the lighting. We took the lighting out. I was doing it so, as quick as I could. But the ladies listed there. Yeah. I know, I just didn't I have a chance to. Don't, don't pretend it's not. Yeah. That on. yeah. I mean, if, she, if you add the rest of the things together without the 150, we're, you come to we're doing 567. This, yeah. We're, we're doing this in like a on sub meeting, trying to work <laughs> to what Maureen said about using the one third, one third, one third, or something of that nature. This does take into account um, reducing some things, taking 163 out of reserves that. You know, keeping that, trying to be healthy, and then it's only 567 rather than 730. So we have actually gone down in what our requests were. So maybe that will help with, I mean, putting a project back in. We're trying to work with you guys. We appreciate that. Well, okay. Go for it, Todd. Yeah. Health and safety. Health and safety items are 229. Yep. Yeah. I got a question, Joe. Please, Rebecca. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. The 163. Where did that come from? I thought you said that's that was reserves. So what we're saying is, go ahead and take that out of our the 422. Our reserves that 400. And so, twenty-two thousand. So if you add up the annual maintenance of uh, seventy-eight thousand, the two items that are already in progress of fifty thousand. And the air conditioners for the high school and middle school at thirty-five thousand that adds up to one hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. So those projects that were on our original list that I gave you, we're pulling out and putting them in for reserves, right? Um, because they would still happen. And then the things that we're requesting out of taxation, and I'm sorry I didn't delete the lighting, I didn't get it. That, but the things that would come out of taxation is the mandated one hundred ten thousand. The two required maintenance because we're afraid they're going to blow at 155,000. The 229,000 of um, health and safety, and the 73,000 of things I didn't know how to quite talk about, but they're really important, so we <laughs> they cover out. So that would include. Um, we can write it up better for you later on. And even with the kitchen serving line, <coughs> that's a $60,000 project. It is a two-year project. This would be one of two. <coughs> Again, I guess you could move that all 60 into the following year if you wanted to do that. Um, the, the mower is not working, so we're going to have to get that no matter what. And the roof needs to be done no matter what. So. Well, I'm, I'm not a 
So it's um, better than when we started. But that, they definitely, thank you very much. The annual maintenance items, I think, should be in your expenses, not, so, not capital. So the policy has always been that anything that is, um, like, the not a one-time purchase. So when we look at system-wide cafeteria, and even though it's 25000 they are one-time purchases. If we buy a new cooler, if we buy a new ice machine, refrigerator, stove, whatever, that's why they're in there. Um, like the duct cleaning, I guess. Well, Isn't that's, that? that's right. Well, I'm confused. Is it that annual maintenance? Because annual maintenance sounds to me like uh, expense. Yeah, but if it's you're, if not. you're <clears throat> improving a physical building, it yeah. goes to capital. Yeah. It's right. just how yeah, accounting so, works. So don't label an annual maintenance then. Okay. Okay. The building Understood. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, anything that's a significant improvement to the building, you add it to the capitalized yeah, cost of the building. It's a word maintenance. Yep. Oh, I got it. Yep. I, I hear that. So we went down from 730 to... Five sixty-seven. Joe, I got. Yes, questions. please. So, maybe it's stupid question night, but I'm going to throw one out. I there. like stupid question. Night. Yeah. What so we, we, we haven't done this bonding before for capital expenditures with the board of ed, right? In previous budgets. We're doing it right now, if you think about it, with the athletic well, complex. You know, the envelope, you're doing athletic right. complex, yeah, all of the those The bond are, that we're about to go into in July is theoretically We have to remember we've got a firehouse coming. Yeah. But this, money. but what the bond fund is paid over time, right? That's what we're doing. 20 right. years, yeah. Right. So how would that look on the referendum? Like, these amounts, wouldn't, would it all be in added to the budget? Like, how do we handle that for this? We'd have to have Bill Lindsay draw up a new schedule for um, the capital project savings. Because mm. theoretically, we save a little bit every year yeah. to pay off that debt. Okay. I have to agree with Todd, though. Like, for 60000 we've got um, duct cleaning. Like, I, I don't think that's capital. Yeah, I agree. Not capital, but well, we. It also I get it that it's a one-time expense, but it also but it's though drives up their minimum budget requirements. So right. improvements to buildings because there are buildings probably technically will be building capital, and that's kind of how the towns handle it. Okay. And a lot of towns, what they also do is they have a facilities budget, and that's something that we don't have here. We have shared services. We have shared services, yeah. but we don't really have board of ed maintenance budget. We don't have a board of ed maintenance facilities that kind of goes over yeah. each one. I guess so I just I would have trouble bonding for duct cleaning. I mean, some I, I see your point, Joe, but I'm not sure the entire list is appropriate. Yeah, well, no. I, I agree. Right. Oh, I don't think that, I'm sorry if I oh, okay. made it sound like I wanted to do all this oh, okay. stuff in a bond. But I, I think that some stuff on both sides, the town and the board, can, can um, you could make a reasonable case yeah, for I can see that. for bonding, but th that that's not going to help us tonight. I'm just trying to throw no, out. No, ideas. no, I, I'm saying future discussion. Right. right. Well, and I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. I, I guess what I'm saying is, if if we kept the budget that we proposed, so. then there uh, is there any appetite in trying to address that need between now and next next budget season? Um, yeah. Do we do we dump it all in now? In which case, I would want to. Uh, the only thing, and, and I realize that I beat a drum of I want to get the budget passed. If we go the other route and say, let's go to the town with legitimate needs, which I agree that they are, and let them tell us what they want to do, that is one way to go too. But I feel like that is essentially saying that our that our process now is to to go in big every year and say this is what we need to do and wait until people finally vote yes. And I, I'm not sure that I want to do that. Um, and I, I think it's a scary precedent to set. So that's why I've been so obsessed with getting to a reasonable number um, that both ends can be, well, let's face it, no one's going to be happy with whatever we come out with. So it's good negotiation. Um, but, I, but I think that 
I think we have to, we're, we are in unprecedented times, so we gotta try to figure out if there's anything else that we can do here. That, that's all I'm saying. Um, but, 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 but. Can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. What, if we, we've got a Board of Ed proposed number then of 567, and I'm hoping Valerie's been keeping score. <laughs> Trying to. I'll the, ask you that the, the town side would be the 550 of annual road reclamation, the Sheepskin Hollow bridge replacement, and then the items that um, Irene just listed off. Well, we also we have road improvements as well, slated and shim and overlay materials. Okay. And but one thing I had explained to Joe as well was these have always been request amounts, but I don't want to shoot the town in the foot, but they've never been exactly that amount. So those amounts can be adjusted too, up, down, all around. Um, but right now, with those projects, the projects that we talked about on Saturday, right? Because we did also talk about the EDC conceptual or the, mm -hmm. the Buddhist Center conceptual design, um, air pack replacement, fire hoses, transfer station. Um, the at some point we did we talk about cemetery work, or do we want to slate that eight thousand for later? But we're at 1.1 million. For capital? Is that including the school for stuff? For town. Mm -hmm. Not for including the, town, the school That's stuff. That's where they're, well, she just brought no. up. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's a big number. They're both yeah. big numbers. That's the point I'm trying to make. We're in a heck of a hole. Where's the cemetery one? Yeah. The cemetery is at 8,000. It's rating number 231. Oh, okay. And what that is okay. for is to continue so they can do surveying. And I think someone at one point said, hopefully, create more space or something like that. I, I don't remember the exact. Hey. Going with your idea um, in regard to bonding and kind of like hearing everything, if you went to the town with your budget, and say, here you go, after the first referendum, if it failed, which hopefully it will not this year, then you can go back and then you can say to two different points, all right, the water holding tank, we're going to pull that out, we're going to pull out the heaters, we're going to go see if we can bond for those. And then go to a separate meeting for those, and those would be you can try it the way that it should be done the first time, which is these are what we recommend to the town as the needs and the wants, or not wants, but the needs of the town, what we think is the best interest. If it doesn't work that way and the town says, you know what, I don't have an appetite for it, which hopefully will not happen, then you can extrapolate different projects from your capital and from this capital, and then say, all right, we're going to go to bond with them. And then look but at which one. Are you going there. to do that year after year after year? And the right. amount you're bonding keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I totally agree with you. <coughs> That's course, why yeah. I'm they saying you ask the public first, or you're going to have, or you no. just make the cuts afterwards. Valerie? Yes. Could you get this up on the screen? Mm -hmm. I think we got to get here. That's what I was going to say. Are we on to number five now? Are we past? Um, let me just try to use my brain for a minute. Are we still up on B or are we down on this, five? Well, Valerie's doing that. I have to make the point as best I can that the system wide duct cleaning for the high school and middle school, the system wide uh, Duck work cleaning our inspections uh, for all those schools and the system wide radar and testing. I can't see that being capital. I think the people in the audience are going to be really upset if we, it's like vacuum cleaning your house. They've already said they're going to pay that out of their reserves. At the end of everything, we can put in operational or you can put in capital 
it's going to have to come out somewhere. Understand, Dr. DeBrito came in in January in the middle of the budget season, so we can't, she can't redesign how the budget was kind of put together and kind of go on for it. It's always been this way. If we want to move it for the following years and discuss what is going to be capital, what is going to be operational, we can. But do you follow what I'm saying, Todd? But the duct cleaning, the, uh, the inspections, the duct work inspection, and the radon testing, it's all done annually, once a year? Uh, the um, IAQ <laughs> inspections are five years, every five years. Right. Okay, you take five so years. I guess my question with that is if you put those in operation, it will you raise your minimum boundary requirement in one year, even though you do have to only do it every five years. Well, that's, or, that's different than radon. Radon, radon testing is yearly. Yeah, Correct. radon but testing is annual. The theory on those. Yes. But that's getting, I don't know. What you have to be careful here, we have to build credibility, credibility in everything we communicate. I guess my question would be, if you wanted us to put $110,000 into our operating expenses, um, are you therefore now asking us to reduce our overall operating by three hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Because you're adding one hundred and ten, and you just asked us to take two hundred and forty out. They're going to pay for that out of So bills. are we now taking three hundred and fifty out? Do you understand this, what I'm saying? Because if right. you want us to stay at one percent less than we were proposed originally, and you just added one hundred and ten back into our operating budget, are you now requesting us to be at? 350 less than we were, so we're now looking to go back to the Board of Education with a request of decreasing our operating expenses by 350000 And this is why I'm saying at the end of the day, it is one bucket, and I, my suggestion is to not start moving shared services stuff to operations or operations to shared services or capital to operations until next year during the budget cycle because Dr. Tabrino didn't even have time to do a format. She walked into the old format and that's what the old format was. Yeah, I appreciate was. that. But do we, we just have to be prepared to answer with right. credibility it, to the taxpayer. Ask the well, question. I don't have, and, and I understand the operating and I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you on the operating. My question is if you want it to be operating, which is Fine. understandable, the question is, okay. Is the request now for the Board of Edge operating budget to still be at that whatever number that two hundred forty thousand dollars would have gotten us at? But you're also now adding one hundred ten thousand dollars more into our expenses. So basically, we are now trying to find three hundred ten thousand dollars because this hundred and ten right. is mandated for this year. So we have no choice; we have to get it done. But if you want it to be in operating, we'll put it in operating. But now, where do you want our bottom line to be? Right I, here, I think we. I, I think. The, uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, 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 so another a, day, another. A public hearing, that's all I can tell you. Right. Otherwise, yeah. we're in breakfast. <laughs> uh, it, so what would happen, he asked naively, if we were to ask uh, 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 Valerie to plug in the 567 thousand of Board of Ed capital and the million five of town capital, what does this snazzy chart turn out to look like? All right, give me a minute. So, 567 and... Is it a nightmare fuel? Net, I guess between 675 and that Is one... Is it a nightmare number? fuel? Maybe. I don't know. Delete the number, but the yeah, number good right. idea. Because I know. Absolutely. So those projects we spoke of were 1.124. Is that the number that you got to pick a number, right? Yeah, that's the ones that you, you just yeah, itemized. You just listed, correct. Right. Okay. Okay. Stand by, friends. I have multiple ways of rolling out all the different stuff here. What's going on here? Right, but I agree.
mark. Where's my number coming from? Okay, here we go. Nine dollar question everybody wants to know. Oh, yes. Mill goes up one point five nine and it's twenty seven point three four. That's Yeah, Increase on tax would be one point nine million. Mm. What's the mill increase? It would be uh, it's right here, one point five nine. So it would take it from twenty five point seven five to twenty seven point three four. Can you can you scroll up so yeah so I we just, can see more? Well yeah. I just Sorry, I'm gonna. Well, what I'll do is I'll try to go like this. Okay. Yeah. Do you want? Oh wait, hold on. Just interested in seeing what smaller like what decreases. else is out there? Yeah. Other decreases would yes. look like. So I can even take. What I'll do is I'll try to like take the heading off. Oh sorry, I'm gonna try to. I'll go like that. Oh. Show a big number down here. Does that help? Just yeah. let yeah. me know. I can keep going. It's hard. I don't want to make it too small. John, you get all the tough questions. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. The uh, holding, the hot water holding tank, a hundred grand. It is. It's five hundred gallons. Hundred grand. Five hundred gallons. You got to remove it too. Yeah. It's got to be taken apart, removed, plumbing. Take it's a not, price on that one. I have. I keep saying this, but the prices are. Yeah. Yes, where we are. I say that about everything. <laughs> so, I hear it every day. <laughs> I, it has leaked before a time bomb. So it's the problem was not having the tank because we actually looked at not with just getting rid of the tank. It's just that we don't have the storage for the kitchen use, and it's considered a shelter for emergency management for showers and such. Uh, so the. Uh, the tank does need to be put back. Um, but yes, those that are, and the guy we use is very tight on his numbers and pretty frugal. So, uh, yes. Unfortunately, yes. So, with a 1.59 mil increase, <clears throat> if the house was 250,000, you're Taxes would be going up by two hundred eighty. Yeah, year? it's a really yeah. it's a hard it's a hard number to really target because the assessments. You know, if your house is valued at two hundred fifty thousand and assessed at one seventy five, so it has to be the perfect scenario. But that's that's the idea. I don't know how many houses that affects in town. Yeah, it kind of depends yeah. on what type of house. It, right. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Right. You have a range. Give a range. A, right. Yeah, yeah range. there's so many different I almost don't, I almost don't, I almost don't like to show yeah. that because people hang yeah. on that number. Talking. Um, but it's a good point to bring up when people ask you how this will affect my house. It's just going to come So if you know what your assessment amount is, right. You know? 
So, either way, it's six of one and a half dozen. Yeah. And the question is, okay, now we got some idea of what we need, what our needs are, how much it's going to cost. How much of that can we bond? Is it reasonable to bond? How much of that can we bond? But even if, even if you bond, don't you have to put it in your budget? You can't just, like, you can't disappear. Right, like, it has right. to be so in the budget anyway. So bonding isn't going to make it go away. What do you mean by in, in our budget? Much like we're doing with our Print. with our so upcoming bond in July. Something. It increased that expense in capital project savings by 411000 Because we're going to go for the next, that whole Bill Lindsay um, presentation, for the next X amount of years, we're going to take on this debt for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, we have other debt also, but things retire and it's a fluctuating um schedule but we're going to pay interest on it now um we're going to pay um we're going to pay for it eventually and you would want to put more money in this budget for potential upcoming bonds just like we're doing with that 5.3 million but Valerie the, the amount we want to bond that's not going to be all in one budget in one year it's going to be that's where our bonding it's going to be spread out Correct, but then Bill Lindsay comes up with that schedule for how to increase that capital project savings budget to effectively bond for it and to make sure you have money in the capital project savings to afford the debt. But if, but if Joe comes up with a list of, let's just say, <clears throat> two million off the four million, let's just say round numbers, we don't need to put two million in our budget. We might need to increase our debt payments by, I don't know, a hundred thousand or something. So instead of putting in two million of capital, we would put in a hundred thousand dollars of extra debt payment. So we something have to, like that, some, right? I mean, that's sort of logical <laughs> reason to do that. I would suggest this budget year, if we're going to continue to bond within the next, before next budget season. That makes sense. You know, but we have, I, I don't have the ability to come up with those numbers tonight. Yeah, yeah that makes that's sense the, also. That's the, and, I, and I wouldn't want us to make an uneducated decision. That's correct. That's why we asked you on Saturday if, if Bill can be here today to talk about our road and bridges. Policy. Well, I did have a chance to talk to him about this week about our culvert situation. Um, and his suggestion was to... Uh, do a short-term note, do a ban. Okay. So we cannot borrow, the state statutes will not let us borrow the whole 800000 because it's a state project bridge <laughs> grant. But we would go to the town asking for authorization for 800000 um, with the, ask the town for 800000 with the payment authorization of 400000 Um Well, that's right. Right, and so that's the resolution. That's getting um, not only Bill Lindsay involved, but um, what's his name? Mike Patello. Mike Patello writes up that 10-page resolution that you guys are going to have to state in the meeting. Um, what that will allow us to do is it will give us cash to get the project done, and theoretically when the ban matures, usually it's in about a year, Hopefully, we have an idea about the grant money that we're going to have um, and potentially how much and how much of the project will be done because we all know that these things don't happen. <coughs> if, the, if the culvert takes us three years to do, we can keep rolling over the band for three years. But at some point, that band is going to mature and we will pay ourselves back with the pay the band back with the grant money. So does that take the 800 out of the budget? For this yes, year? we yeah. did it that does. already. We already did that, yeah. yeah. That's um, I mean. it's, it's a short, it's a short term bond. It's a, it's, you know, you can also take that and say, okay, you know, we don't want to pay for this, this year. We're going to roll into another bond and, and take the net of that and scoop it up into a 20 year long term bond. Once maybe we have more money, more idea on the roads and, and what the product of that's going to be. Right. Um, there are issuance costs involved. Um, the interest rates tend to be higher, right? Let's think car loans, you know, mortgages are much less, interest rates are lower than car loans, short-term versus long-term. 
So you have some higher issuance costs and you have some, um, you know, probably a higher interest rate, especially considering the times. But that was his suggestion because you don't necessarily need to pay off eight hundred thousand dollars over twenty years, right? <laughs> um, but that's a way that we can get that culvert project started. Um, we talked on uh, Bill and I talked on Tuesday or Monday. I don't even know where I'm at right now. And so we're going to start conversations with Mike Patello. Um, we can certainly talk about Bill coming back out maybe in April. I we can. We address that too. So the um, bottom line is, but that was the culvert report. Bill doesn't think we're nuts thinking this way. No, no. Okay. No. He, um, before I even had the chance to talk about a ban, he said, "What about short term?" No, and I was like, "Whatever you want to call it." <laughs> Same thing. Okay, so it, it, the other thing that may provide a little better news is. Um, after the public works devises a plan, right, has the engineering report for all, every mile of road in town, and has a plan for it, um, that would be another one where rather than putting out whatever it is, 550 mm. plus another 100 or so <clears throat> of annual road maintenance that you can look at and say, here's this lump. We're going to need $10 million over the next nine years, nine years or whatever. Um, how do we finance that and spread it out, right? Because... It seems like you could make the case pretty reasonably that if you totally redo the road from roadbed up and all the drainage, yep. that um, it'll last 20 years instead of five years. Right. right? Not be a failure. So, so we, we'll be able to find. but that also is something to explore once she has that report with. Um, Bill Lindsay and folks who know that stuff better than I do. We, do. I, I mean, but all right. Um, Irene, do you feel that you have presented capital adequately at this point? I, I know. I again, ideally, I know that we would love for all these needs to be met tonight. Um, yeah. Not a loaded question. I just want to know where no, you're no, going no, right absolutely. now. Absolutely. And, okay. you know, again, if we had to stop at the road reclamation, we had to stop the road reclamation. Figure out the rest of it as we go. Um, you know, I mean, we, we do that all the time. We always figure out ways to fix. You know, we've got duct tape. We're good. And drilling, drilling. So we got to do what we got to do, you know. All right. Thank you. Um, Dr. DeBrito, Patty, Cindy. Um, do you guys feel that we have an understanding of where we are a little bit better? Mm -hmm. We do. Okay. Thank you. Um, Valerie, will you indulge, can everybody indulge me one last time for like two minutes? Well, I just want to have a clear understanding of this and then we can move on in whatever direction everybody wants to go. Um, let's say we pass a Band-Aid budget this year, just meet our needs, all right? And then we meet next month, and there's discussion of we want to spend what, I like the $2 million number, right, on uh, that we want to bond for a number of projects that the town is desperately in need of. Can you, and, and again, I know this isn't fair because we didn't discuss this before, but can you give me a loose idea of what that process looks like and how that would play out? Will it take the entirety of the next budget season to, to come to fruition, um, what would what would the process look like? Maybe I, I'm not understanding the Well, whole similar to how we just kind of did it with Bill Lindsay, right? We had all these pending resolutions for projects that hadn't been bonded, 
we're kind of doing it the opposite way. We're planning to bond, right? But he came out and explained, you know, because he knows our policies for debt service. He knows what we currently have for debt service, what we're looking to do for debt service. So he could come out to do another analysis of where we would be moving forward and what drops off every year because debt still drops off as we pay it off, right? Right. Um, and so it comes in as that transfer in revenue, you know? Um, so we would start there. Um, we'd get Mike Botello involved. He's bond counsel for drawing up resolutions for the projects. And we would go to town meeting to get them approved. Okay. And then it's the process of the town meeting and the referendum that would make it, it's going to yes happen. Yes or no. And we're gonna yeah. Buy. Yep. Okay. Um, if that were to happen, is there any interest from the Board of Ed and the Selectman's Office to work together to come up with some type of uh, package of projects that desperately need to be done? Um, is that a non-starter? Is there any interest from you guys to team up after the fact if we're not able to accomplish a significant amount during this budget season? I know. I what I, like that that long range committee is exactly the right people to have in place to start talking again, even though we haven't met a lot in the past. But that is exactly the place where you want to start. Get regular meetings going. Right. Because like I've heard a bunch of times Irene say we have a firehouse coming down the pike. I've heard Patty say we have a high school. I've heard a lot of big ticket things that they don't have to be, I wouldn't say monthly, you know, but more than once a year <laughs> during budget season, right? <laughs> but that's where you get all the right people in the right room to start devising. We could have Bill Lindsay come out to that meeting to talk to everybody. Um, they'd send a recommendation to the Board of Finance to say, this is our plan, this is what we want to do. Unfortunately, because the way municipality works and the Board of Finance sends a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen to send X to town meeting. I go back to your question. Were you asking if we were okay pushing some of this off? What, we, what was your intent with that question? So I'd like to know if there is any hesitation about if the Board of Finance tried to put together something in conjunction with Long Range Capital that worked between the two arms of the town government on all of these expenses. Is there any hesitation, any reason that that wouldn't happen? And the, and the reason that I'm, I'm asking it that way is because I don't want anybody to hear that I'd be willing to pass a smaller budget with the idea that we're going to work on getting some stuff done this year and then have anyone just hear like we're just trying to get this to go away right now and then never coming back to it like frequently happens in town government, right? So I, I want to, I guess what I'm saying is I want to try something new. We can only get so much done before April 1st, right, and included in this budget. So I'm just curious if there's any concern that we would not be able to work together to get some of these projects done. I don't think there's a concern of us working together. I think this process is going to be quite cumbersome and very long, and usually like the gym floors and things of that nature, they're all done during the summer. We can't do them. If we don't do them between <coughs> July and August, they're not getting done. So there's no sense putting them in, you know, in there. Um, the same thing kind of like on as much as you think the, um, the serving line is not a pick up and move. Mm -hmm. So if we don't get that done this summer, it's not happening. And I, I'm highly concerned that you're going to go to a um, <coughs> referendum in May, right? And then you're looking at starting this process. This process isn't going to go to referendum until September. 
And then we can't get any of this stuff in there. Like we can't do our gym floors during the school year. I mean, if you've ever been in there when when it, they're having it done. Well, well, don't don't. I just want to interrupt you for a second. I'm not saying not fund anything. Right. I, I'm I'm trying to figure out a long term solution so we're not doing this every year. So and I do think I do think that we have got to sit down with long range at least three times a year, maybe four. And I think that what we need to do is do it directly after the budget mm -hmm. and then do it um, one directly before we start the budget and one in between. Because like I, I've been doing long range for, I don't know, five years or whatever, and we meet once a year. It, it's painful. And I agree 100%. And I think that I think that we also, now with Dr. Torito here, to Todd's point, we need to have a joint, another joint meeting about what is going to stay in capital, what's going to come out, what, how we're going to arrange things. Um, and that needs to start next, next year, too. You're not saying, or are you saying, take the 567 off the table? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying either or. I'm trying to figure okay. out a long-term oh, solution. Yeah. To coming together. Absolutely. Yeah. Does um, that make sense, what I said? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, I just think it would be, I, I, if we could get, get something like this working going forward, and I, I just think it would be more practical to have everybody at the table rather, I mean, certainly we can do it independently. Um, if I can interrupt for two seconds. So the original plan of the Long Range Capital Improvements Committee was to look at the 10 year, mm -hmm. not the current year. So it was, so when we come through and the Board of Ed has a 10 year plan and has had a 10 year plan forever, and the Board of Select would have a 10 year plan. They know that in 10 years or three years or one year that the firehouse needs to be replaced or whatever. So the original concept behind the Long Range Capital Plan was not to look at current year needs but to look at what is in the future. So what can we, what can the town afford if they know that in 2027, the roof of the high school needs to be um, replaced, what are they gonna do as far as saying to the Board of Finance, just to let you know, we understand this is coming down the pike, how do you wanna fund this for the future? So that's where the Bill of Lindsay comes in, that's where the, the, the future bonding comes. It was never really the intent of the Long Range Capital Plan Committee to look at the current year needs. Like anything that basically was added onto a current year is probably a, a oh my God, we need this now. You know, that's, those are those kind of things. The, the original thought is you should have a 10 year plan, and we do. Like I know the Board of Ed does, I know the Board of Selectmen do, where they say, okay, the high school roof's coming to, to fruition in 2027. It's been on our 10 year capital plan for five years now. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't wait till 2027 to say, oh, look, there's a you know, high school roof that's been sitting on our capital. I mean, I have 10 years worth of 10 year plans, mm -hmm. and it's been there for a very long time. My 10 year plan goes to 30, 35 now. And there are things on there. So it was never the intention of the long range capital plan to look originally to look at this year. It was to look at what do we need to fund in the future and how is and go to the Board of Finance with Bill Lindsay and whoever, all the people who know how to do that. How are you going to fund for this for the future? What do, you, do you know that this is coming down the pike? How are you going to take care of it now? How do you build your capital reserves on the town side to be prepared for these funds? Current year capital should be already in the plan. It should have been in the plan, 90% of it, maybe 80% of it, whatever. Um, we didn't have the water boilers in our 10-year capital plan, right. but you're going to have those things. You're going to have those things that come up. But we know that fire apparatus lasts five years. So in five years, it should be back on that plan somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we know, for instance, like Don said, put on the 10-year capital plan for the high school track that we need to resurface the high school track in five years. It's on our 10-year plan. We don't want to look at it in five years and say, oh, look, here it is. It's too late by that point. So the original concept of the Long Range Capital Plan was that 10-year picture, mm -hmm. not the one-year picture. The one-year picture is you guys saying, yeah, we knew this was coming. We didn't know all these other things were coming. Like, these are the new things, the water boilers, the whatever, whatever came broke. 
And that's where that system should be, which is why it really should be not a, oh my God, the budget's here, let's look at this. It should be the, let's prepare for the future. And that was the original plan. So, And I do know that the Board of Selectmen, just like the Board of Education, has that 10 years in their head and we've had it for at least 10 years past so that you have that idea so we can go to Bill Lindsay and say, we know these X, Y, and Z are coming down the pike. What do you recommend to fund your capital reserves on the town side to be prepared for that so that when you do your budget, you can say, we need to bond for or be prepared for or be ready to pay for X number of dollars every year. So your $100,000 or whatever the number is that you think that you need to add to do this additional bonding is already in the works and already in the plan. And then when you're looking at the budget, Sure. It's already there. So that's the concept. So yes, so, and that is the Board of Selectmen, that is the Board of Education, that's the Board of Finance, plus a few other people coming in and saying, wow, look at all this great stuff that we So what you need. described was the original intent. We right. just need to have dates on the calendar to meet and not have this pressured meeting just before this meeting to sort of go over current needs. Right. I think this year is a little bit of an anomaly, too. We've had a lot of changes, changes <coughs> in the Board of Finance, changes in the Board of Education, changes in uh, But probably the last three years, the long range casual plan has been yeah. a lot of the, so, let's just look at this year instead right. of... Right. Well, my thought is if we can get a representative from our board, your board, and from the selectman's office mm -hmm. to get in a room just to discuss yes. practicality of bonding would mm -hmm. be huge. Yes. Um, but that's my thought, and I don't want to go too far off of um, off the track. I, Irene, do you have any problem with that? If, if, if and again, no, not a big problem. Okay. All right. Um, any proposals on the table? We still have Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas's proposal on the table. Anybody have any other adjustments to the budget? Or questions or dialogue or where are we here? We gotta get back to trying to figure out how to pay for all this stuff. Well I'm not seeing a lot of people jumping up and down <laughs> for the top line of that chart. Um a mill rate That may be a little stiff. So if we move down the chart. Valerie, can you scroll down a little? Yeah. I can move it so ever slowly there. What's your target number, do you think? Uh, or how far do you want me to move? To the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> to the bottom. To back to zero? <laughs> Put on to the bottom. Zero. Okay, that's probably good. What would one mill rate, uh, a one mill increase give us for capital to work with? Well, let's assume that we no. change. Let's assume that we've got everything else fixed. The operating budget sort of locked in. What did we put? 1.12 plus the 500,000. Um, a one mil rate one increase, mil. you'd have to get 700,000 right, out. You'll have to reduce 700,000, correct. If you wanted to just go up one, no. Well, Todd, you mentioned yeah, we fund balance. Do we, is that? Yeah. So we have to reduce from that. And it, from the 1.8 million. We don't have to like slate exact projects. We can, right. You'd have to come down to 900,000 capital, roughly. We said instead of the 730, we were going to go down to the 576, right? I yeah, have that number in there. Yeah. I calculated all those numbers in there. That's in there. Yeah. So you got to get down to like 991 in capital. For both education and total. government? Yeah. yeah, total. So what have we got in government now for capital? 
Uh, those projects were 1.1. The stuff she added today. Okay. Which, none of which were all that big. Yeah. Right. Just funny how those numbers add up. But again, it's priority. Right. I assume the stuff she added in, I understand her point about fairness and openness, but it sounds like that wasn't the top priority. They weren't the top priority items. I think well, we those have were, to look at our those list. Were, those were projects that need to be continued based on phases. Those were roads. Those were things Fire that were armor. priorities, like safety. Fire so hoses. Fire hoses is safety. Body armor is Air safety. Um, and the transfer station attendant office is blown away, I guess, right? Is that something happened with that? That wasn't good. <laughs> Um, so, I, I think her point was comparable to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, but, oh, but folks, we have to both have to have to take the same attitude on both sides: education, and government. Correct. Asking both what's important. They told us what's important. Uh, Irene told us what's important. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, what does that give us for a number? A big number. Yeah, that one point six nine one. One point six nine one. Yeah. We're saying, we have to get down to just below one, 999. If you want to go a mill, yeah. Yeah. So then what can we eliminate uh, this year to get down to 900,000, whatever the hell it is? And what does that mean in terms of health and safety or critical items? And can we, that stuff we're cutting out, can we bond that? No, not likely. I mean, at that point, you're going to only bond $700,000. So, okay, and that's another question. What can we bond then? Out of the, out of the 1.14, where was it? What can we bond? A water tank, maybe? Sidewalk? I think that, yeah, water tank, sure. That's a replacer. That's like a new idea. 100 grand. I don't know if you, I, I don't know. I wouldn't assume it. The interior. And 20 well, years of expenses on that to hold up our debt. But, yeah. Well, folks, we're in a position right. where the town, I don't think, is going to accept the 6% increase. No. It's out of the question. We're going to be forced in this situation anyway. Right. We might as well face it now and have a good plan to give to the taxpayers. So, I'll ask the question again. What can, about the whole list of stuff that's needed, both on the government side and education side, how much of that can we bond? We would have to have discussions with the bonding people to determine all that. I appreciate that, Valerie. Yeah. That's right. But that's the big question. Yeah. Right, right. Right? Yeah. How do we get this stuff done? I, I don't think it's going to be in taxation. Right. To be honest with you. We know a lot of dedicated people in town, but we're in a lousy economy at the moment. We're in a pretty bad state for it anyway, Connecticut. So it's a double whammy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Speaking for me, for a guy who travels around the country, I see it in spades here. Mm. In spades. So, um, but that's what it comes down to. And I don't think we can answer that tonight. But we can answer the question, what's important? And, and I think um, we're going to come to a point where we're going to have to cut some stuff anyway. So, we can uh, take this one step at a time, answer the question, what can we bond? And that'd be a big help. Because that, that really tells us what we have to uh, put in taxation this year. And Respectfully, I think we have to pass the budget sooner than that. <laughs> well, no. I know. But, <laughs> no, I know that. But you know? that's why I'm just asking these questions. Yeah. I just don't know if we can answer that tonight. So, well, I mean, yeah. It's a problem. Yeah. Go ahead. Suppose we were to say to ourselves, um, the, on the lines 27, 28 down here, that uh, a one and a quarter mill rate increase isn't the end of the world. And to achieve that, we need to take 400,000 out of this 1.692 million. And the way we're. Are you down, just so I'm following you, are you here with the one? Do you see my cursor? One point two yep. six. Okay. Yep. To, to achieve that, you got to get four hundred thousand dollars somewhere. Somewhere, and so, um, 
hundred thousand out of the Board of Ed and the balance out of and three hundred out of the town government side. That's your assignment, go do it. And that's the budget we'll propose. All right, we got the numbers. Right. I mean that's I'm in the in the effort to reach closure somewhere. Yeah, that's what, that I appreciate that. Yeah, I think everybody so, can appreciate that. So we're gonna reduce capital by four hundred thousand. Yep. Total. 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 Four hundred thousand out of the board of ed. Three hundred thousand out of the town. Well, that's a proposal. Let's see that's a proposal. what that looks like. What is it? And how much? Three hundred hundred thousand out of capital for board of ed. A hundred. From the 563 versus the right. Mm -hmm. yeah, we need to do it. So just did you bring in Jimmy Dean's just sausages? public works is that is 950 out of the 1.1. 1. 1. Let's see if we so get job. I, they've never. I hate to say this, but they've never always been fully funded. So we've done this before, where we've said town gets this much capital, board of it gets this much capital. Figure it out. Without and that's how we, picking specific projects? Yeah, because that's how we need to just set a budget. When, when yeah. we get to the point where the budget's about to be approved, you know, we can set the projects. But I think that's kind of how we did it last year, when, especially when we started cutting. I mean, you we were saying cut 100,000 here, cut 200,000 here. So in the end, the two boards had to slate their capital. But Valerie? I understand what you're saying, but that's exactly how we get in trouble the following year. The year after that. You like Harvey said, that. we didn't bring breakfast. <laughs> but, so we are up against a tight budget this year. We have to send something, right? Yeah, but you also, I understand that. Yeah. But we also need to commit to exercise the long range planning committee. Right. Really exercise it, not the balloon we've been doing in the past. Yeah, because I think that's our key to all the answers that you guys are looking for. Right. But that's it. Well, I mean, the two, the public yeah. works. And the taxpayers should be looking at that as well. Yeah. They don't like this either. That's the change. You, you, you're not doing the same thing over and over again and expecting yeah. different results, right? So this year, we're going to do some butcher cutting. Homework. Homework. <laughs> but you've got to commit. You've got to demonstrate that to the taxpayers. We've got to commit to carry on and want to do a bond for the rest of us. Right. And I don't know how else to say that. It's going to take all of us to do that. But, mm -hmm. um, so, so, we'll, so we'll go back and find another 100K, right? Because well, I'm, I'm not arguing. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Joe, I was wondering what you think about. Yeah, like, I mean, they this have to come up with a resolution, here. right? For them, um, to ask and then us. it'll go to referendum, I, right? Oh, you know, I know. the process. What's the total breakdown of what's still in the All right, I'm going to try to highlight it without messing up this spreadsheet. Does that help you guys? This Thank one right here. Does that work? Okay, there we and go. So, give me a loose number. So our total capital at that point is what? What now? It'll be like 1.2 million between the total. Yeah. Almost 1.3 million between the two. And so we're okay, saying... I thought it was 1.6, and we're going to cut 7, so that means we would be down to, like, 9. Yeah. Yeah. We cut 4. Oh, that's right. We changed it to cut 4. That was the second proposal, Sorry. yeah. 100 out of town, 300 out of the board of Thank you, yeah. So we're down to yeah. 1.291. Call it, good Lord, for $100. Call it 1.3. Yeah, 1.3. <laughs> and, okay, and so then... The Board of Ed is getting. They would about get. Five? Yeah, well, the five four, minus, so they would get 467. Okay. And the town would be. All right, I'm going to do. Hold on, I got to write this new math down. <laughs> There's just not enough room on the page. The town would go from 112400. Minus three hundred thousand. Eight twenty-four. Eight twenty-four. Okay. Eight hundred twenty-four thousand. So that covers the prior that would cover the priority capital projects that you listed tonight, and then the balance would theoretically go to the Sheepskin Hollow temporary bridge and a road. Maybe. Um,
So, uh, I'm willing to commit to that if we also get a commitment that we're serious about if we form a subcommittee to it is formed. take on. It just needs meeting dates. <laughs> we, uh, Exercise, yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, because I think we seriously have to. We have to think about uh, seriously think about bonding <coughs> numerous projects that have just been. You talk about the cost of not taking action. I think that's what we're looking at right now. So if we can have a stopgap budget that meets our immediate needs, and then we can commit that we're gonna. This is the change that we're gonna make here for the positive. Take on. I think it's. It wouldn't be a a, a horrific number for bonding uh, that would handle a lot of projects, and then get the long range capital back doing what it's supposed to be doing. I think that answers a lot of long term needs. Um, what's the feeling from the rest of the board, Rebecca? Can I put you on the spot again? Just because we got to start somewhere. Uh, sure. And I picked on Harvey already. Already so tonight. Where were we landing up here? Were we saying we want to go with a one mil rate? Right. Yes. Where it's highlighted. But that's where we're going to yeah. be. One yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What do you want to know from me? <laughs> I just want to know what your thoughts are. If you want to adjust this proposal, if you like it, hate it, favorite so, color, all that stuff. I think, I don't think that's going to fly. Okay. That 221. And, and yeah. um, most of us have property that's above 250,000 tax at 175. So I know I for my house, that's probably going to be at least doubled. So I don't think it's going to fly. Okay. I am not opposed to bonding and getting this long range committee doing what it needs to do. But I'm sorry, it's not, I don't think that's going to pass. Okay, so you're a no. Do you have a counter offer? I have the one mil rate proposal. That's what I'd like to do. So you're up on line 21. Yep. You can okay. throw anything you want at me. Okay. I'm ready. All right. We're getting somewhere. <coughs> yeah. Maureen, what are your thoughts? Is fund balance still in play for the difference between this line and that line? I think everything's on the table right now, but I think historic, we're already kind of at the high water mark historically okay. of where, right? I don't think if we're talking five this year, I think that's higher than the last several years, right? Yes, is that, yes it is. Okay. So I we're think- not, We're not at that. Not at the We're extreme. not way at the, the, we were, I don't know, it was- We were at uh, like 11. But yeah, about 11 and- percent uh, and policies eight to 15%. But uh, dollar amount, though, we, we were talking 500000 this year. Uh, you, typically, though, we usually have gone 250 I think Okay. So I don't know if averages have been working for us. No. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. No, no, I don't, I don't want to go. I, I'm <laughs> just saying. I'm it's, not it's, seeing it's, either it's, way. I'm just saying. I, I don't want to lead the, the charge into using the highest amount of fund balance. Okay, I hear Th you. That's, that's where my concern it's, lies. It's been in, in the 400 range. Right. But this would be the highest already, I think. But well, uh, I, I, I'm not that old. <laughs> I can't tell Fair you. Fair enough. You got all the good genes over there, Harvey. Um, I'd like to stay away from using more, okay. but it's on the table. I think everything is on the table this year. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, unfortunately, and I'm just one vote, I kind of agree with Rebecca. Okay. And, you know, I've heard everything everybody has said tonight, like, you know, we could bring it to the townspeople and, you know, let, you know, before we start cutting, let them vote and then we can cut. But I, I, I think one mil would be more palatable. I okay. think over 5% increase. I think I, I, I just would hate to waste everybody's time. Okay. Appreciate that. Anything else to add at the moment? Not at the moment. We're but coming I back. The right Don't worry. Come back here. Too. You got it. We can do that. Todd, where are you? I, uh, I think we need to do everything we can to scrape any money we have available, any of it, and stay within policy. This is a very unusual time we're in. We're in a crisis, basically. I hate to use that word. Don't hope there's no politicians in here to look at the quarter, but we are. And uh, I, I'd be, I tend to push the fund balance thing. Another hundred grand. That's what I tend to do. Right now, because right now, the 1.26 mil increase and the 4.9 percent percentage increase is way too high. 
I've already talked to a few people in town. I'll take that back. They talked to me, and and I, I put out the 3.15 percent. Okay. Did not get a good reaction, and this is from several people of different backgrounds, without me uh, prompting them. So that told me that maybe they're pushing it. That's my two cents. So if you were going to use another hundred thousand in fund yeah. balance, would yeah. it be one line up? Yeah. yeah. All right. Drop it to four point six percent. Not a big. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not a big deal, but still. Just over now. It's, uh, it's a good faith effort. It's a good faith effort, exactly. Because uh, once we commit, if we communicate this story to the town townspeople, they will understand a lot better. Right now, I didn't have a chance to do that uh, in this past few days because we weren't settled on what we we're going to do. I didn't want to open my mouth until I knew what we we're going to do. Um, but that was a reaction, and that's how people people are going to see the bottom line. It's going to grab their attention right away. So anyway, I, enough said. Okay, it's too high. Thank you, Eric. Where are you? My favorite color is blue. I, and you wear it well. Which you, one? The, a good it, color for you. It, it, um, I happen to agree with Rebecca and Green. I think 1.26 mil increase is not going to fly at all. Okay. Um, I think a, a one mil increase is even pushing it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I think we need to. I think we need to cut more. Okay. Appreciate it, Harvey. Um. Okay, where? Yeah. Good question, too. I mean, you already sort of use more fund balance that we have traditionally used. Um, and assuming we're all going to be back here to do this next year, I'll repeat what I said on Saturday. This includes five hundred and forty five thousand dollars worth of taxes that were collected above what we needed because of the way things got scrambled up last year so that's in here that reduces the amount that we have to increase taxation next year is coming yeah. fiscal year yeah, it's so it's only going to get harder Yeah, even if we are flat next year, we're 550000 behind the eight ball. Exactly. Right. Not where we really want it to be, but we are. So, okay. Um, what are you saying? You want to take another hundred grand out somewhere? That gets you to... I think that's where we're at with the five hundred, right? Because we were at four hundred. Then we then you suggested another hundred thousand out of fund balance, right? So now we're up one line to the five reduced five hundred thousand. And then if we can cut another hundred thousand, move up one more line, is that what you're saying, Harvey? If we could, where would we? Yes. That seems where the consensus is. So we're beyond <laughs> we're we're beyond getting too far into the weeds. Um, everybody takes a haircut is probably the way the, the expedient way to do this. You know, to Todd's point, we we were all going to have to be salesmen on it because if we're going to go to the town after last year's referendum and say, hey, we want to increase the mill rate by X, Y, and Z, everybody's going to sit there and say, you're out of your mind. And you know, I, I've had conversations with, with my friends in town, and to be honest with you, most of them don't want to see an increase. 
in an RA. And unfortunately, that's, I just don't think that's going to happen. We're going to have to increase it. Um, you know, there are people here on fixed incomes. There are people here that, who's, you know, the father's out working one job and mother's staying at home and, and whatnot. We have to be mindful of all that. But to that point, we need, if we're going to do this at a, a 1 mil increase or even a 1.26 mil increase, we're all going to have to sell it. And when the town says, if the town says no, I hope they don't. But if the town says no, we're not going to, we're not going to do this. <clears throat> then we're going to be back here in this room having the same conversation. Where are we going to cut? What are we going to cut? Everybody in this room is going to have to take a huge hit. Every department, everything whether they like it or not. We are here for the people of this town. That's what we need to focus on. Mr. G. That's why I'm so focused on bonding as much as we can. That's a plan we'll take to the town. And we need to know that answer before we make all this public. That's part of our plan, is it not? Is it not our plan to bond the rest of it? Yeah, I think to begin the process of seriously entertaining the, the really static needs of uh, capital needs for the community, yes. That should be part of our communication. So people will understand, hopefully, this is a spike for this year. Where that spike is going to be, they still may say no. But I agree with everything Eric said. Um, it's going to be tough, so we got it. But what about the rest of the stuff? We're going to tell them we're going to bond it. Well, why don't you bond more then? Right? That's going to be the answer. Why don't you bond more? And that's what I'm thinking now. We need to bond as much as we can. But. Do. That's like, I want to borrow as much as I can, right? There's no free money here. I didn't say there was, Harvey. But the fact is we're losing money in the current condition of this town. We're losing money every stinking day because it's cost us more to repair. This is work we should have done a long time ago. We didn't do it. So now mm -hmm. we're paying interest in spades. Okay. That's what people got to understand. So are we happy? Not happy isn't the right word. Um, the line that um, has the little green dots on the left-hand side would be one point one eight mills, which means we got to find another hundred grand, right? Our numbers person left, but. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> that, I, mean, I think if we went to the town and said a 1.09 mil increase. Oh, that, that, that's going up another line. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's 200 that's grand. That's what you're saying, right? You're going up, to, going up one line or staying no, at 1.18? 1.18. 1. 1. Staying at that. We, means we need to find 100 grand. We go up a line, we got to find 200 grand. Why don't we take the... This is why you get paid 30 bucks. It's great. Be <laughs> real with this thing. Um, Why don't we take the ambulance contingency money and deal with that? Still fund the replacement ambulance, but deal with that when it blows up. Maybe the world will end before the. Uh, before <laughs> That's <ambulance>. right. <laughs> That's a good long term strategy, right? I mean. <sighs> Irene, have you heard anything on the ambulance? Is there any movement? 
So, I mean, yeah, we could need it tomorrow, but on the flip side, we could go six months without needing it. You can rent them. You can borrow them. We're borrowing one right now because both of ours are out of service. Well, I still want to fund the the 68000 yeah. yeah. for a replacement. Yeah. yeah. But our placeholder, I think maybe you should gamble with that. I don't like to. Um, I don't know. It's an idea. Uh, what else we got? You guys have to pick a number. I know. Ten days. And I personally think that 1.01 mils try to be more palatable than 1.09. It I sounds agree. small, I know. We don't, I don't want to get too far away from what? I agree, Todd. Because I, I agree, somebody said people are expecting zero. I got that word too. The so 1.09 in mill rate? No. Is that what you're talking about? The 1.01. 1.01. 1.01 mill. So we're right back to reduce 700. Yeah, 3.93. Right. So right. we already right. came up with four. Now then you threw another 100 of fund balance in. So we need two more. Percent oh, increase. So, so what would that? Ambulance, we need one more. At at this rate, what do we have for total capital? capital? Well, <laughs> who knows? Okay, let me. Sorry. So About we were down to 400. We used another 100 out of fund balance. That got us to 500. And then we just took out, are we doing the, took it down 100 in the ambulance? Yeah, we'll entertain that. Okay, yeah. and then that'll take another $100,000 out of capital. Or somewhere else. Right. That gets us to one point, almost one point two million in capital. It's one point one nine one. That's good. All right, let's do it, and then we yeah. we propose that we have a legitimate multiple board bonding project proposed by the end of the summer. Yeah. You're, you're cutting a hundred from our five sixty-seven. We're at four sixty-seven. Yeah, just a hundred from capital at this point. Four is that capital? Right. Just capital. Right. So yeah, unspecified. Okay. We're getting yeah. to a mill rate at this point. Okay. So we need to. Uh, we need another hundred grand. I that? think I can, was, were you saying another, but where's that last 100,000? Did you suggest? So we took, what do we take? We took uh, a lot of capital, 100 out of fund balance, one out of ambulance. 100 out of capital, and the ambulance contingency. Was there another 100? I think we get up to seven. Don't we need one more? We did. We took four. So we were at 400. That's capital. We took another 100 out of fund balance, got us to 500. We took the 100 out of contingency, got us to 600. And we just took another 100 out of capital, got us to 700. But where are capital? I don't know. <laughs> Government capital? No, like, so where does if you mean? guys want to talk capital or set a mill rate, I don't know. Leave the capital for quarter bed in the town. You Four want to do 50 six, and 50? Four, I don't care, whatever. I just want to know the number. <laughs> you know, it would do, it would be. Well, we're at I mean, I just, someone tell me like something different. 417 for Board of Ed. Instead of 560. So 150. You're cutting the Board of Ed 150. Well, yeah, yeah right. we're trying to come up with Right, and then, and then 350. On the town side, and seven seventy four for three fifty on the town. We were just at eight twenty four. No, cut, cut, cut from the one point one two four that we were. Uh, yeah, we were at one point one two four. Yeah, and then cut three fifty from that, and it gets you to seven seventy four. I think. Yeah, that's the that's our new, and that gets us to cutting seven hundred thousand dollars. 
our new expenses would be the 40 million with revenue. Taxes go up 4.17% and a mill rate uh, about a mill. Right. Okay. Any discussion on that? Rebecca. I think that's a great place to start at. I think we should, well, say it, but just have an open mind. I'll say that. And I, I think if we're gonna if we're gonna set that, if that's what we're setting, we need to set that. We need to be convinced of that, and we need to be able to justify that. Mm -hmm. Reasonable. Uh, do you want to add anything else? Just we need to explain it. And I'm thinking we should write a press release. Write a press release. It's important that we're all on board. Yeah. I'm feeling the pain myself, and I like it. We're all feeling pain. So we've got to be able to explain it to the taxpayers. Would your board be open to that, Patty, you think? Of course. Okay, great. So let's connect and we'll put something together. Eric, any final thoughts? I think we're at a starting point, and um, no, we're at a rate. We're at a no, we're at a budget. Yeah. We're not at a starting point. Starting <laughs> rate. If we're at a starting point, then we need to talk more. But right, right. Because no, if we're going to okay. say this is the budget, we're, right. then this is we're the budget. at a point. And um, have, uh, let's sell it. If not. We're at a starting point with the taxpayers. With the taxpayers. Yeah, we're, yeah. Ready to, we're ready to go to them. Correct. I think that's what you meant. Yes. Yeah. That's Thank the first, you, that's <laughs> the first time I heard that phrase all budget season. There are some that are, that are sharpening your pencils. I haven't heard it this year. So. Well, sharpening pencils. All right. Thank you. Now we're, all right. we're 2 and 0. Oh. Harvey, anything else? No. I'm. It certainly ain't got a lot of fat in it. No, definitely not. So yeah, I can, I can support it. All right, great. Well, thank you all. Um, I, I, well, I know you're working. Uh, were you able to have an initial motion put together for? Yeah, should be all right. Just something. Oh. Even, even as we, even that? as we. I was just making sure you were paying attention. <laughs> Not a mess. There it is. Before, uh, all right. It's um, I'm glad I got a snack. Hard work and a bunch of dollars. <laughs> all right. So before we move along with all that, um, I'd like to reopen the floor to guests and audience comments. Anybody have anything to add? I appreciate all the all the work and camaraderie, and um, <laughs> I think that you know, we have a lot of new team members. You guys have some two me team members. Next year, let's start. You know, when we do our kickoff tri board meeting, I think that needs to be earlier. I think we need to talk to Todd's point. Um, you know, about format a little bit. And I think we need to work together throughout the year. And then I think things are, are going to go well. I would agree. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks, for, Patty. <laughs> thank you for working with us and communicating freely. We're very appreciative. You guys have done a phenomenal job putting together uh, budgets. and um, Valerie, and one more thing. I'm sorry. Could I trouble you to check the email one more time? Numbers are off. So. Let's, take oh, let's get those right. Yeah. Uh, no emails right now. No emails. Everybody's waiting to show up in person. Give <laughs> me one second. Oh, take your time. I'm gonna oh, now is the time to. Uh... Right. Did you guys see that Joe Lieberman died this evening? Really? Yeah. Passed yeah. yeah. away. Oh. No, I didn't know that. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, sir. 
Um, yeah, my name is Mike Callahan. I live in Augusta, 21 Augusta Circle. Can you Lewis. come up on the speaker so that we can get the minutes? Thank you so much, Mike. Um, my name is Mike Callahan. I live at 21 Augusta Circle in Moodis. Um, I've sat through several budget hearing meetings over the last couple of weeks, and um, a lot of the comments that people have made are, I think, are very telling. I think there's three things that I wrote, or three things that I wrote down, and there's a fourth thing that I want to mention. And the fourth thing is next year at the tri-borough tri-board meeting. I think it's imperative that you set out what the future is for the next five years. At least tell the people that they have to expect. Roads are going to cost this. Schools are going to cost this. You know, you've got to you've got to lead the audience. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been to triboard tri board meetings before, and all they talk about is the current budget. They don't say anything about the future. And essentially, you know, you're paying for not maintaining the buildings and the infrastructure in town. And the bills come due. <laughs> and, you know, you can't raise it through taxes uh, totally. You've got, you've got to prepare the audience for an expectation. Um, and I think that's part of your responsibility as town leaders. Um, the other issue, two other issues I have are the state mandate without, uh, uh, without funding puts added pressure on the taxpayers. And it's, it's unconscionable. It's unconscionable in this state where we say education is important and the state treats the towns like they do. And I, I think, uh, PTO organizations in town need to get that message to their legislators. And, you know, if enough people start talking to the legislatures, things will change. But if nobody talks to them, you know, they, they get their head in the sand. And um, the other thing I worry about is, is budget creep. And I think that was kind of Todd's point of uh, wants versus needs. You know, we, we, in these trying times, we need to make sure we're, we're just asking for wants. I think if you do the uh, five-year planning uh, at the appropriate time, that's where you can put in some of, the, uh, uh, some of the wants as opposed to the needs. But you gotta balance the two. So those are my thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Figured it out. Spreadsheet's playing tricks on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we increased our revenue by 100000 right? Theoretically, from mm -hmm. fund balance. Yeah. Yep. So we were sitting on that line of cutting yeah. 700 but we're really cutting 600 Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So... We're back at that 1.01 .01 increase, so that's our line right there. Sorry. So 1.01 mills. Yeah. Yeah. Increase. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure you guys use the right expense number when you do yes. this motion. And like I said, it was playing tricks on me. So it's a 3.33% increase? 3.93 on the mill. So the mill goes from, sorry. yeah, sorry. Yeah, I know, it's really hard to do the same thing. 2575 five to 2676. Six. Almost a solid mill. The total expense budget. All right, so we have our motion there, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to say a total budget number. It's going to be this, this, I don't know how to make it. Maybe I should just make it yellow for you guys. Does that help? Does it see better? 
Budget represents 1.01 mil increase. And a um, point nine three. I'm not giving you my percentages anymore. I'm gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. Three point nine three. That's the increase on the mill. I was gonna do I think the motion is for the overall budget. Yeah. Four point one seven. Cram those screwed a little bit to soften the increase in budget. Yeah, a little bit, right? That one, almost two million, right? That's another message for the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. You can increase their grand list. Other than by building, building houses, you can put business in. Hold on. Yeah. I'm giving you the percentage, and it's not. Helping me right now. There it is. Four point two. Going slow, guys. I'm sorry. So the increase on the overall budget over the 37 million, right, from last year mm -hmm. is 7.28%. Because we're oh. stating our new expense budget, right? Do you want to do an increase on the mill or an increase on last year's budget? It's going to have to be both because the mill is what people pay. Right. The budget is what was driving the mill going oh, up. So right. 7.28% increase budget. in the expenses, expense budget? Yeah, to get from 37, 9, 11, 165 I thought it was 30. to 46, 72, 9, 15. The increase, the 4.175 is increase on taxation. The 3.93 is increase on mill rate. But if you want to read your motion to say increase from last year, we use it on the 37 million that we're sitting in right now. I mean, it's your guys' resolution. You can change what you want to say. I'm just copying what you did last year. Don't give us that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, no um, do we have an, the, the first resolution? Do we have a uh, adjustment for the unassigned yeah. fund balance? Oh, yes. It is one million one forty five zero zero zero. Just one million forty five thousand. We took another oh, hundred thousand. Yes. So I corrected it. Yeah. Can you double check me before I read this? Yeah. And don't hold me to it. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm having. <laughs> yeah, so we took another 100,000, right? Okay. Our new, after we reduce, because we're going to be at a mill, right. 46.72.915. Right. I'll do this math again, but we're going from 46.72.915. We're at 37.911.165. That's the increase divided by. Can I just do it? Yeah. Now I'm second guessing myself. Wait. The too budget's much. right here. The prior year. Is it what you're looking for? Okay. So 
four oh six seven two nine nine fifteen. Usually, ClearDub is really good about giving me my percentages. Oh, it's not helping me out. Thirty-seven nine eleven one sixty-five. Yep. See what's happening with my fingers? They're not working. No, it's because I'm standing there. <laughs> People do that to me. It's, I can't. You know, 37, 9, 11, 165. Divided by 37, 9, 11, 165. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What is it? 7.28. 7. Okay, thank you. Over last year's budget. Good there. That's good. So there's two separate motions there. And that's what gets us the use of fund balance, and that's what sends the resolution for the budget. Okay, everybody ready? Any other discussion, problems, issues? Go back to the drawing board. Good. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to utilize one million one hundred and forty-five thousand of the unassigned fund balance to offset the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget, five hundred and forty-five thousand of which has been designated as a projected amount of over collection of taxes from fiscal year 2023-2024. So moved, Gelsman. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second, Watley. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Can I have a motion to present to a public hearing on April 16th, 2024 at the Nathan Hale High School, a total budget of $40,672,915 based on the October 1st, 2023 grand list of $1,199,000. This budget represents a 1.01 mil rate increase and a 7.28% increase from the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Kolosinski. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you all. Um, any other business? We can't discuss other business. That's right. Oh. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I have a second? Nelson seconds. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Bye.